Samuel's managing in the back. He's going to click the got it button there, and you're all set. Have a good meeting. All right. Thank you. Well, good evening, everyone. Today is Tuesday, June 13th, and it is 6.32. Uh, may I have a motion to accept the agenda and call the meeting to order? Sorry. Moved by Ms. Connolly and seconded by Ms. I'm going to read our diversity and inclusion statement before we start. The select the City Select Board is committed to providing an environment of respect during meetings. We ask all members to interact in a polite manner, even when there is a disagreement. We value the participation of our community and want all participants, including marginalized and minoritized communities, to feel welcomed and respected. We ask our community members and all who participate to commit to these standards to support and respect our community. So with that, um, are there any walk-ins? I do not see any. So we will go to the report for the Good evening. Uh, let me just start with the water real quick, and then we'll talk about the water bills. And, um, so I was late, that's what I was discussing with Nancy. Uh, reservoirs at plus one, tack factory ponds at one and a half. Uh, reservoirs up a half inch, tack factory pond is the same. Uh, our usage continues to go up last week. Uh, we were 1.74 million gallons a day. With prior to 1.697, so that just continues to go up. Rainfall was 0.9 at the plant last week. The item manganese contact is on schedule, they're doing the inspections now, so we expect to have that turned on shortly. Kev, uh, we we'll ask the south pretty much every day, uh, but they have it out there doing the inspections. That should help with the groundwater issue that we had last year when the weather got up and the reservoir level dropped. So we have received. Um, so calls from the board from board members about water bills. Uh, our meter reader, our long time meter reader left last fall. We had a new water meter reader. Uh, we also brought the old one back in January to help out. We had some readings this last reading, which was period B, which was the June reading, uh, which seemed to be abnormally long. And we're up in 90 days. And did those push people in another tier? So based on the runs that I have from Nancy, uh, with north of 200 tier changes in that period. Uh, but we looked at individual bills. Uh, one person was over 90 days, but they were over 90 days last year. The bill actually went down from last year to this year. Uh, one gentleman, his bill went up over $200. The difference, both times he was over 90 days, the difference in the reading span was only five days. The difference in his usage was 1,200 gallons. So he wasn't pushed into another tier. So what it looks like we're going to have to do, and Nancy and I, Nancy just ran probably three dozen different reports uh, to try to go through area B, look at people who might have changed tiers in that period, and then go back and look at the usage and what happened what was their reading span last year? What was their reading span this year? According to Nora, the water department, they can vary from 85 days to the high 90s on a regular basis. Um, but there are some that went much longer than that. Those are the ones we're trying to narrow down and look at those particular bills and say, hey, why did that happen? Um, it's going to take a little while. In the meantime, if people think that they're affected by this, they should just file an abatement at this point. You think your bills are normally high because your reading changed. Finally, baby, we can look at that right away. In the meantime, the report um, for the whole area is over 500 pages. So it's going to take us a little while. We're just trying to find the right report to run uh, so we can narrow that down. But we're in the process of doing that now. Uh, but if people look at their bills and say, oh my God, my bill's way out of whack from, uh, from last reading. You need to look at your, your bill from last year and compare apples to apples. Because uh, obviously you weren't watering your lawn in January. You weren't watering your lawn in December when we were done last week. So you want to make sure you compare it to the period of last year. If you seem to think there's a big discrepancy, send it in so we can just take that right away and look at that particular bill and see if we have an issue or not. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So just to summarize, you think 200 or so. We, what, we can, what I can say, when I look at last year's June bill, yep. this year's June bill, so the tier two bills, there's 141 additional 
people in tier two than there were last year. There's 71 additional tier three and 12 tier four. Okay. Now we also have additional people. We have more meters this year, so that number is also going to be skewed. But we got to go through it almost basically. The mm -hmm. issue I was just comparing going down a page. Um, we're just trying to figure out how to run the report that's going to show that to yeah, us without going through five hundred pages. Going through five hundred pages. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's area B? Area B is all over the place. It seems to be North Situate. Uh, sorry, yeah, North Situate. Uh, it's the West End. I put it on a map here to just print it out. Uh, but it does not appear on Scarsway, on this island, this hill, uh, up into the West End. Okay. I mean, how do these get determined? I, I haven't had a chance to put it on a map, Karen. I'm just, just curious. Just kind of, uh, it's just the routes that they have when they read the meters. So oh, it's area A, area B, and area C, and that's where they read okay. the meters for that thing. So. <clears throat> I'll be reading every three months. That's three areas A, B, C, and just rotate through. So, um, but since it's the last bill, that's when we started getting complaints. It's definitely going to be area B because that was the two bills as well. Uh, any questions? Is, do we yeah. have any evidence of any other uh, areas are going to be impacted by over 90 days? It doesn't well, look like. It's not just over 90 days and it's going to be significantly over 90 because they could be over 90 and you might get a reading that's 95 this month and the next next reading is going to be last because they're going to do an 85. So it, it's got to, we don't see those number jumps in the other, um, no, the other months. This is the one that kind of stood out to us. And we didn't get any complaints from the last round of bills to say that, oh my God, people are saying, what's happening? Susan, anything? Nope. So I just want to clarify. So the, the delay in reading was the, the, you know, the genesis of this was staffing. We had the, the new media reader left in April, I believe. So the department has been shorthanded anyways. We're bringing the gentleman back because we're tired, but he can only work so many hours because it's our pension. So you limit how much you can work after you retire. And then we're taking employees off their regular duties when we can to send them out to read meters. But obviously they have other duties. We've hired a new meter reader. I'm not sure we sign an extra week after. I'm trying to figure that out when we start. So the, the underlying problem is being tested in practice. Yeah, we don't care. Yeah, it's a staff and we'll find a staff for us to fill that. Yeah, we should be able to catch up. Thank you. But like everybody else, we're in you know, those, the water department, the highway department. Just have a hard time getting staff because there's so many jobs that they don't think we're going to find. Thank you. Anything else? Just can't. Thank you. Um, well, will there be an explanation in <coughs> bills as to what happened to them? Or are we going to be contacting them? I need to, to see exactly what the universe the is, Karen. I, I don't okay. know if it's, we go through this and I was going to throw a makeup or not, right? Yeah, yeah. It's 25 people. Yeah. That's easy, right? We can contact those people, say, hey, we think there might be a discrepancy with the bill. If it's 200, 300, you know, if we're missing people, it's a whole different universe. I have to figure out how you want to do that. But I just need a little bit of time to kind of get into the data. As I said, we tried running a whole bunch of different reports. We couldn't quite get the report we were looking for. It's, so. so the people most impacted were the people who were well over the 90 days. Yeah, so the, we saw some readings that the first, the last reading was the beginning of January, and then there were readings uh, well into May. Okay, there were others that were at the end of January, and say May 5th, May 10th, that's not out of the order, that's about right. Beginning of January to mid to late May, that's that's a bit long, and those are the ones that we're trying to, try to go to first. I mean, I was looking, going year to year, see whose bills went up, big jump. Oh my God, that person's bill went up $25, and the base charge went up 10. So they owe it up $15, that's just, you look at it, it's just usage, right? right. So the one I see that went up 200 plus, it's like, oh my God, 
when I looked at it, really that meter reading dates were really off by about five days. So, so the best advice you're going to give to people is if they look at their water bill that they got recently and it's some enormously big change, please this contact Father the right department. now. Otherwise, we'll be, those contact other people that we department. look at and say, hey, yeah, you just call the question. We can dig up the number. Yeah. Say, no, you, you know, last year, last year your meter reading was 94 days. This year your meter reading was 97 days. That's not enough to. Well, I'll admit to everyone in TV land that I went and looked at my bill, and it turns out it was twice what it usually is. And that's because I forgot to pay it last quarter. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, oh, thank you for fixing so it. Yeah. Whoops. So, anyway, so sometimes it's. Yeah. So it, it's, it's, not, it's not unusual to be over 90 days. So the reading's going to fluctuate yeah. depending on what's going on, the weather. Uh, but we're looking for those that are in the 110, you know, really over the 100 day range. Uh, and then what was the reading last year? What's the difference? Would that be enough? Did you change tiers from one year to the other? Um, looking to kind of nail those people not going to so again, it's hard to come up with. Cut out of every court, so we may have to store it. Appreciate that, and thank you for checking into it last minute. Just give folks, just to give folks an update that it is being looked into. Wherever, so, um, just let us know when you have an update, and we'll yeah. continue to advise. I have to remember bring my glasses because it's really giving me a headache. Sorry, we don't want to give you a headache. Anything else? <laughs> <laughs> Anything else in your report? Yeah, just a couple things just to, to keep people up. Uh, we had our site visit, uh, weekly site visit on the lighthouse today. Um, the next thing for the contract, as I said before, they're going to come down about four and a half feet of that brick. That has to come down. The brickwork, as you see, inside that is a concrete dome like structure that actually holds up the slab. And that brick holds that concrete structure in. That has to come out. The brickwork has to come out. Then we form the dome, put the brickwork back. Um, the, the difficult thing is we have to source tired looking bricks. Uh, we don't want to put brand new bricks up because that will look different. So that'll take a little time. Once we do that, uh, the whole light is will be painted. You will start seeing. Yeah, but the, when you look at the bricks, they're all they're bumpy, they're been weather. If you put a brand new brick up just out of the kiln for an engineer, that will absorb water, swell, change. So you want some bricks that have been in the yard for a little bit and you've already absorbed that moisture and not going to change shape. Maybe we will pop out a little bit. We're going, to, we're going to get it back up and get it back in. But people will go out there now and we'll start seeing that lighthouse drop coming down. I don't know if people will be surprised by that. That's, that's the next thing that we'll start putting this is concrete dome we put. Uh, we're putting together the uh, graphic that I sent to the board showing what work's going to be done. We're actually putting that on a, a presentation board. We're going to uh, zip tie that to the fence. People can actually want to see this and what it's actually going to happen. Yeah. Uh, but right now we're on schedule. And once the contractor starts the fabrication of the new lighthouse, we're actually going to go take a look at that and make sure that's what um, it's, it's, we're on schedule right now, it's just the 200 year old lighthouse, so as we do work, we're going to find some things. Nothing major yet, but we do expect to find some things uh, that we expect to have. Yes, we are. A reminder tomorrow, uh, weather permitting, the lifeguard exercise down at Peggy Beach. Starts at 2 o'clock, they have a lost baby's drill, a lost child drill. They will be using their radios and calling those in on the radio, so if you have a scanner, you will get to our they lost pay the drill, they lost child drill. You go by, you will see the fire trucks, you'll see the police vehicles, the hot and master of water. It is a drill, so please be aware of that. Lifeguards are on the beaches starting on Friday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Two other things. Uh, we need to give a huge shout out to South Shore Boat Tech. Uh, a couple of board members went over there. Four gentlemen in the town purchased the 1924 fire truck. Engine two is the second engine that the town of Sitchwood ever had. Uh, if you go to the website, you can see pictures of what it looked like. Uh, Firefighters local on Facebook also has some good pictures. Uh, we took that truck, we gave them to more tech, and they did an absolutely amazing job restoring that truck. Body work, custom wood work, custom body work, engine work. It looks like a brand new truck. It's up at station three. Still the station three, uh, station three, if you want to look at it. 
maybe we'll bring it down to touch and try for people to look at. But we're gonna we're planning on putting it in the price tag tax right next year. Um, but a huge shout out to Stoush and Bo Tech. They did really an amazing job uh, putting that truck back together. So thank you to them. If you get a chance to go to our Facebook page or website, I'll get a with firefighters uh, have some better pictures. They took the pictures at the station. My pictures are still from Tech. Really, just an amazing job. They do such good work, and uh, we need to thank them and the students for all the good work they're doing now. Uh, that's really all I have tonight. Nothing. Uh, town hall is closed Monday. Keep it looking. So, our weekly update will be Tuesday next week. Uh, okay, great. Thank you. Does anybody have any additional questions for Jim? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One, uh, Jim, on uh, good, possibly good water bill news. Are we ready to announce a rebate? So we have a rebate program for for washers, washers and uh, dry dishwashers that are energy efficient. It's ready to go. We have to send it out probably a bill sign in the summer. Uh, that's going to depend upon what I have to do on these bill questions. So I got to put a mail on the bills, and that rebate is going to go off until the mail on the bills. And I don't want to have a two dollar mail in the lot. Those are ready to go. People who replace their inefficient washers and dryers. Uh, we'll be eligible for rebate at two hundred dollars. Was it? Yeah, was uh, one. Two hundred dollars until the money's gone. Um, there's standards you have to meet. You have to bring a proof of. There's a form you have to fill up. Send it into the water pump. We'll process that to meet some requirements. So we have rebates for making your uh, heavy water use appliances more efficient. Yeah. Not not It's no water. It's, it's, it's just a rebate. It's not okay. on your water bill. Um, it's just a rebate. If you put an energy efficient, because they're expensive, then most guys yeah. are buying a regular one. Uh, we'll give you a rebate. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Toilet is a thick one, 40, which, basically, which is essentially a free toilet, yeah. average, mm -hmm. which, is, which could save 13,000 gallons a year of folks, washer and dishwasher. And folks at home don't know. Mm -hmm. So that's up to five to ten thousand gallons in savings by doing that, and that's real money. Two hundred dollars. I want to have a few more details for that lady, but I ended up yeah switching on to the water bill question to get a chance to get yeah, no, I just put that in my head. My so stuff. we'll do that on the upcoming dates too, and then I will talk to Kevin and get him ready to send out the water bills as we go. Yeah. Anyone else? Yeah. I just want to. Thank uh, the TA and DPW for um, getting out and addressing the accessibility at Sand Hills. Uh, it was uh, greatly appreciated by the residents. There were some rocks blocking the access, and they were able to uh, address that. So thanks. Yeah, that was a lot bigger job than we thought it was. We almost had to work the next day and get the stones up, but Mike was able to get around the radio machine. But a little bigger job than we thought it was. Well, it's appreciated. And, um, Thank you. I have a small item. It's a small item now, but it's apt to become a very big item. Um, apparently, we were not allowed, I won't say who, uh, a group to plant an evergreen tree on Los Lacan. Um, it is in probably a very bad spot for that type of tree because it's going to become very big. And while it's small now, it would be the time to transplant it. I have a photo of Jim. I talked to Kevin about it, and um, I, I think the, the people met well, but we're not quite sure exactly how it got there. But I was planning, I know, since you said it was planted by the what, Beautification Committee, I can't remember if they came to the board for that or I not. I think they did. Yeah, we did. I seem to recall. Yeah. Um, so. It was in memory of students at the high school. Yes. And so it was uh, also. Um, we went to the historical commission and the uh, historical committee uh, to ask them about it as well. I, I think if it's a concern, uh, we should be the first ones to go and say, you know, let's see how right. we can change that. Yeah, I think if you look at it, I went down and looked at it myself, and clearly it is going to be, unless it's a dwarf specimen, which I don't think it is, it's going to be a very big tree. So it's probably. Like the tree that was cut down about 30 years ago. Okay, so you'll take a look at that for us? Yeah, okay, we certainly will. Thank and you. and um, um, yeah, yeah, it's, and it's small enough now to move it. Yeah, but it, 
just won't be for yeah. 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 No, no, no problem. Um, and uh, I'd love to take care of that as soon as we can. Also. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Good. All right, so moving on, um, first item on our agenda is an update from our public safety team, Chief Thompson, Chief Murphy, and Deputy Chief Donovan for plans for the 4th of July. It's right around the corner. So, good, good, good evening. I believe that we're here again talking about this. And this is going to be here in no time. So, um, Sure. Like it was your yeah. last. Okay. I'm gonna defer to Deputy um, Chief Dunn because we'll be running the state the department by the time the third of July comes. But all I, I did look ahead, you only want to stay as Monday the third is a full moon. Oh, um, right. Right. Um, Thank you. We do have big tides all week too, the eleven and a half foot tides, so at night time, but they're not till midnight, dying off on Sunday, so the overnight tides beware if you park down full parking other places, but um, hopefully the offshore winds and and we uh, definitely handle the safety stuff for the third, fourth. Okay, so um, I think we're looking at this as we have in, in past years, right? We'll, we've seen a significant trend um, in a more positive direction since the bonfires ceased to exist, and that has helped us dramatically. So, uh, you know, the anticipation is that we leave the beaches open again. Um, we'll monitor in real time, public safety dictates otherwise, we'll close the beaches down. Uh, but we'll do that on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, this is going to be kind of an extended weekend also, since the fourth falls on a Tuesday. So we're looking at a long celebration, which would be fantastic, but we just want to understand that public safety is going to be paramount for everybody. I mean, that's the big thing that we want to look at. Um, as we've looked at in the years past, um, there are no planned events in town. So we want to get that message. In years past, we had kids come from near and far, and then on rock, it was a good idea, and there were plenty of events down there. There are plenty of events, so we really just ask parents to kind of monitor where their kids are and what's going on throughout the weekend. Um, fireworks, bonfires, sparklers, all illegal in Massachusetts, or bonfires in our case here. Um, as is public consumption of uh, alcohol, marijuana, underage drinking, all the things that we talk about it every year will be the things that, from a public safety standpoint, we're really looking at. Uh, in advance of the weekend and throughout the weekend, we'll be monitoring beaches also. So if we see stockpiling of materials and pallets and things, we'll look to address those and in no fire we'll talk more about that. Uh, as we have in the past several years also, Operation Dry Water. So on the uh, on the water as we look at that, that's that coordinated effort between law enforcement, basically with Coast Guard, MVP, our master, police department, looking at OUI, voting on the influence on the water. Uh, so we'll have that again. Um, spoken with our neighbors, glad we've got work with law enforcement around the area too, as we just kind of look at things together. Um, Humrock, we'll have a noticeable presence from the police side in Humrock Square, um, but we need to stay to keep it open. Parking throughout town, though, is always a concern, so we'll be looking to enforce parking completely across all the waterfront areas. Uh, and I know Chief Murphy's brought this up in the years past too. We want to make sure that there's access available for engines and apparatus that need to go through. Uh, and I think that over the course of the next couple of weeks, you'll continue to see communications from us. We'll be jointly putting out communication in terms of expectations. Uh, we want everybody to have a good time. I think we're really seeing that the family fun come back. Um, but we want to do that in a safe and responsible way. So that's where the focus is Yeah, just to. Echo with what Mark said, we're um, we're not going to allow one fires. Um, we really we're trying to, um, you know, I've been out of, I've worked many many years on out there and talking to the residents that uh, you know we're looking for families. You know, bonfires are no longer allowed. We uh, we allow the campfires three, three feet in diameter below the high tide line. Um, clean wood, um, you know, no accelerants, and uh, we just keep. Just keep it a family event, keep it low key, and um, you know we, we join. I uh, we we I think we had one more fire call last year, and it, it was basically it, it turned out to be more of a uh, event. We handed plastic helmets out to the kids and telling them that 
not to add any more words than that, you know, just keep it down. So we didn't even have to I think people get the message, but we're just going to, we're going to continue out there. We're going to have um, probably eight to 10 extras on duty because we run a 30 ambulance, um, you know, just with the volume of people or uh, volume of medical calls go up. So we, we, you know, we'll be ready. Okay. I guess I guess that extra hands on duty so as well. Yeah, we'll be staffing additional officers throughout the entire weekend. Okay. Um, different times we'll have a higher concentration than others. Sure. <laughs> Um, one question I have, full moon or the high tides at night? Or? So the high tides on Sunday, on Monday night, it's just about, about midnight. So it advances an hour each day, maybe about 15 minutes. So overnight, the good thing about midnight, so about 10.30 or the third, tides are going to be pushing. So you're going to push people up to be So hopefully around 10.30 on the third day, about long weekend. I happened last year, I think it's sort of worked out well for us. So okay. like, you know, the high tides are on midnight and overnight, so the rest. By Thursday, by noon at 3 30. Uh, thank you. Any questions for the board? No. It's one other thing that I'd like to emphasize, and they touched on it. Uh, there are certain areas down there, the water where people like, like big parties, we need to keep the roads passable for our vehicles. Yeah. Sometimes we get out there and there's a lot of fire trucks not going to get down the street uh, because you and your neighbors are parked all over the place. So. Uh, that's something that's just to, to Chief Thompson to be sure that we're getting on those people so that the fire department, if necessary, get their vehicles up around those streets. So please uh, be mindful of that when you're having people over your house. That's something our community staff will do. We usually um, we'll check those areas just before dark to be sure that they pass more for our grass. So our, our community staff will be out there. Before we let them go, Chief Thompson, I mentioned, but. Thank you for that, and I'm not going to let you go yet. This is uh, Chief Murphy's probably the last time before the board, because he is retiring. So I want to say on behalf of the board publicly, thank you so much for your dedication to the town and all the efforts that you partook in, especially to get that public safety building built, you know, being the main folks on this board. Uh, you know, very instrumental in improving the public safety situation in this town. So. You've been great to work with. We will miss you. Um, you know, let my other board, fellow board members say something. We look forward to your retirement party. Um, so you'll have to let us know when that is, Chief. That's right. So you can see that. Better not waste no time. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you for your service to the town. And we will be missed. Did anybody else say anything here? Yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure working with you. We are going to miss you. We're going to hunt you down. But, um, you know, I, I do want to know when we have the, our public safety officers in front of us. You know, we we always, you know, have the good news stories come in here because we can talk about those publicly and, you know, and we went a little above and beyond to help and save folks. Um, but the flip side of it is sometimes there's not pretty stories. And you guys just professionalism and the caring. <laughs> and compassion that you um, have shown to our community all these years is greatly appreciated. So we'll see you on the beach. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, we have a great group from the from, from top down. Everybody does a great job. Really proud of that. And uh, the efforts they put every day, the people on the street, Arabic and AMT on the street, they make it happen. So really fortunate to have good people. I'd like to say I would be remiss if I didn't personally thank you for everything you did to get the public safety building built along with Mark Thompson. The two of you went out and talked to countless, countless community groups and overcame some objections. And um, it wasn't easy to do. It took a long time to get it done. But without you, it wouldn't have been done. And I think we should all be very thankful to you and to you for everything you did. And I saw it personally. So thank you very much. Well. But it's been uh, a pleasure to work with you. I'll disagree. It's been an honor. And I mean that because I've never seen someone so it, it's the strength of caring and knowing folks. And without, I think, even you knowing it, just watching you work with uh, other residents. Um, you know, love you have for this town and community. It has been a uh, experience in that, understand public service, and um, it's, it's been a true honor. Thank you. Thank you.
We just are getting a new volunteer again, so oh, uh, excellent. we may take one of them to work. <laughs> Who knows? So okay. is somebody coming in here from the No. Okay. No, we're just okay. accepting. So, no, so we have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> we have another donation from the Citric Capacity Covers Club to CPC Purple Dinosaurs Playground. Yes. We move that the select board accept the four hundred forty dollar donation for use in the CDC fiscal year twenty twenty four purple dinosaur project. Motion by Mr. Goodrich, second, second by Mrs. Canfield. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you for those donations. Uh, next on our agenda is to discuss the library foundation naming opportunities. Just the name of the genie, which it looks like is just a thing. The genie here, Sarah's not not Joe McNally. Joe McNally <laughs> is away, so I'm going to Joe. Okay. All right, so you want to tell us a little bit about? Yep, we have three gifts. Um, these are not gifts that just came in necessarily, but just we are finally um, documenting them and putting their plaques up in the library. Uh, we have a gift of actually sixty five hundred dollars was. Donated in memory um, of Helen Forsgaard by friends and family. She loved the library and big Situate family. And uh, that will, she will be getting a plaque, will be put on a large book set in the library. Uh, the second one is $2,500 that was donated by Dean Shea and Barbara and Jim Sibiello in memory of Dean's wife, Cornelia Bowker Shea. And Again, it will be a book stack put on a book plate put on a book stack in memory of Cornelia. And the third one is five thousand dollars donated by Barbara Alger and Richard Vignani in memory of their sister Julian Papadrea, who was a local situated artist. Um, and they will have a plaque um, a book stack, and their names are all on the um, letter boards as well. That's far. And, and we want to thank everybody. These are all gifts in memory of, and it's been really a lot of money. And friends and family donate, you know, and everybody comes together and it really has a big impact. So we're grateful for that. We are as well. So thank you to all of them for that. Um, anybody have any Just one question. I noticed that, that there was one of the donations, and I honestly can't remember which one it was, but it has a quotation from Dr. Seuss, which I greatly. I'd like to. Uh, my question is, is there a certain amount of words that you allow someone to have? Yeah. Because most of them seem to be born in memory of our loving, our beloved sister or work. Yes. So that one sort of just jumped out at me. It's a, it's a really nice idea. I like the idea of it, but I just, just thought I it. think the quote, and I, oh, I hope I get this right, the more that you read, the more that you learn, the more that you know, the farther you'll go. Dr. So, yeah. Um, they all have the opportunity. There's an exhibit day on the town right. where, um, to, you know, all the signs say it's got to all fit on the same standard sign. So there's not a lot, there's no paragraphs. Oh, okay. so that's, that's my question. It, yes. it would be dictated by the size. It's all, all the same. It all has to fit on the same standard sign. And they, all the signs say made possible by a generous donation from, and then you can say friends and family of, or specific people. And then you have the option of saying in honor of or in memory of, right. or just bring it forward. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Any other emails? Um, just the housekeeping on your form for next year. We change the select board. Yes. We updated this for next year. Form is not yes. Yet. So that's a housekeeping issue. Um, but thank you very much for all your work. So it's great to have those right. donations, especially in the morning. Do I have a motion? Uh, move to approve the Situate Library Foundation naming opportunity memoranda as agreements as presented to the board. Moved by Mrs. Canfield, second by Mr. Goodrich. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. And, and I'd like to congratulate Mrs. Mayors on her um, uh, not, uh, election as a library trustee. Well, on her what? Uh, election oh, as a library trustee. Oh, trustee. Yeah, congratulations. Well, you well, certainly have a trustee. You got re elected? No, no, I was I was with the foundation, so I just this is my last official foundation duty. But I um, I have to give on for nine years because your vote, so I'm losing my vote anyway. But I will still continue to follow it. Oh, congratulations! I just assumed you were the trustee bubble. <laughs> I would work as hard as one. <laughs> well, thank you. Congratulations. Uh, next on the agenda is Jesse. 
in front of us as well to talk about outdoor entertainment permits for the summer concert series. Such a great event. So thank you guys for seeing me tonight and welcome to Zyla. This is my first time here on the I uh, am actually here to present um, the summer concert series, but also the summer reading kickoff um, on June 28th. Um, that is going to be from 5 to 7 p.m. on our lawn. We'll have a magician, um, like Ben, as well as a snowball truck, which is the most important thing in my opinion. <laughs> um, and uh, we'll be signing up summer readers. We usually get, you know, between two to three hundred people at this event. Um, so it is a large event. I will be for this particular one um, asking for a police detail, uh, just because sometimes we get people parking against spots that they shouldn't have branch street and, and they can help a little with that. Um, the other dates for the summer concert series is every Wednesday in July. Um, we'll have long games out at 5 30. Um, the concerts will start at 6 30. And whether if the weather is bad, we'll have them inside in the community room. Um, I'm actually going to give you guys a bookmark, which anybody can pick up at the library to tell you um, what bands are coming. Um, but I can tell you if you can only make one, um, come to Odaiko um, Drumming. Uh, they are incredible. They're Japanese drummers, and it is it is a little loud when they come, but it's it's you know it's an hour. Um, and it's, it's just incredible. And which date is that? Um, that is going to be on July 12th. And all of these artists are, um, you know, um, uh, representing um, different nationalities, different cultures. Um, so, you know, we're going to have a lot of exciting, exciting bands coming. This is always a fun thing. And this year we have Thoreau's Way, the CBC project um, completed. So that's going to be just another lovely spot for people to be. I'm enjoying the show. Thank you for all that. It is wonderful all the work you guys there. I need to come over and see the new park garden too. Yeah. Yeah. Any questions for Jesse? Sure. No? Awesome. Good event. Do I have a motion? Um, we have two mm -hmm. motions. The first one is for the reading kickoff. Uh, move to grant an outdoor entertainment permit to the Central Town Library, aided by Brent Street, <coughs> June 28, 2023, for a live band or acoustic instrument from 5 to 7, and move to grant an outdoor entertainment permit to the Town of Central Town Library, aided by Brent for Wednesday, Wednesdays, July 5, 12, 1926, 2023, for a live band or acoustic instrument from 5 30 to 7 30 p.m. Moved by Mrs. Canfield, second, second by Mrs. Connolly. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Another Thank great you. summer. I hope the weather holds out. Yes, absolutely. I'm going to leave these with Jim because I'm going to try to get him to come. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys can grab them at any time. That's great. Thank, Thank you so good. much. Have a great night. Yeah. All right. Uh, next on our agenda is to discuss about a block party. Is Caroline Burke here this evening? I'm uh, not. Are you Caroline, Caroline Burke? Burke? Yeah. Okay. I am not. Uh, just uh, your name and address, please. Yeah, Daniel Burke, 23 Fairview Ave. Okay, Daniel, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Do so you want to tell us a little bit about what um, you're going to be hosting on July 22nd? Yeah, sure. Um, this was news to be, um, I didn't know there was a form to call a block party, but uh, but there is. And, uh, <laughs> and you did. You did a good job. Yeah, my wife did it. She did a lot of that. She just didn't want to do the meeting. Um, so I live in the Fairview neighborhood. It's like Fairview, Utility, Cedarwood, and Chimden. It's been a lot of turnover in recent years. Um, I've done personally five houses in the neighborhood, all the uh, general contractor. There's a lot of new people in the neighborhood who want to have a party to kind of get to know. I want to say there's six new babies in the last year there. So we're having the known as ice cream truck come. We're gonna, I mean, I would say we're blocking the street, but that's a where fair few cemetery entrances. It's uh, my in-law's house, my house, and the neighbor's house that I sold them, who's also throwing the block body. It's a U-shaped street, you can get to anyway. I don't think blocking the street, frankly, I don't think you'd even know if we block the street. Like, I've had a lot larger parties in my own residence with no uh, but we expect maybe 50 people or so. Okay. And I know I just, you know, hopefully you just see the police want to make sure we fire to keep the road clear so you can see the able to pass through. And then also just to double check, um, 
maybe get the meal home to make sure there are yes. no. Yeah, um, it's a Saturday happening. and I can reach out to them. Okay, there. just to be. Yeah. And it's, uh, it doesn't really block any access. Like, it's a usual street. You can go the other way. Uh, any questions for Mr. Burke? It was a good application. Oh, well, yeah, <laughs> really yeah, this is the easiest meeting I've ever had in this room. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Let's take it down the road about that. All right, do I have a motion? Move to grant a block party permit to Instagram for a Caroline uh, for Fairview Avenue on July 22nd. 2023 from 6, I'm sorry, from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. Moved by Mrs. Canfield, second by Mrs. Connolly. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Thank you. Yeah, enjoy. Thank you for filling out a permit. Sure. Okay. Um, next, we have a new Walker Pepper license review from Kevin Norton. Kevin? Go ahead. Can you just say your name and address? Kevin Norton, 8 Sandy Lane, Central Pass. Okay, so uh, I'm as a most of my non commercial fishermen situated at the assembly. Uh, I've decided that a uh, great way to get local seafood to people to do something fun in town with a food truck. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take food directly from my boat, process it in the ladies, and serve it on a food truck. Find it uh, kind of more like a fun alternative for people around town. Uh, for people also to be able just to get to taste fresh seafood. You know, and, uh, so I'm planning on, I was, what I'm planning on doing is doing three nights a week by five to eight. Uh, I, want, I was trying to, I was, I, I, I'm trying to, I've worked with people right on, on the places where we work, going and stuff like that. I have everything done from the town, I have my board of health stuff, everything uh, you know, completed. But I was going to ask the board, I would really like to do it on the town here in Sicily. So I, uh, I'm right on, so it's 300 feet from an establishment. And I'm right about there from Lucky Fins. And I've talked to Lucky Fins. Uh, and they told me they closed at four. And he said, basically after four o'clock, he's done. He has no interest in the night. Uh, so he, he said, you know, I'd be happy to send customers your way as soon as I shut my doors. So I'm, I'm uh, you know, I was just trying to be, be a good neighbor and you know, go about this the right way. I'm talking to how I'm master. And found a spot on the pier where it would be away from everybody in the loading zone and uh, kind of wait for after, you know, after everyone's done unloading and things like that. But I just think it's a really, I personally think it's a really cool life. Uh, you know, there's a lot of walking traffic, there's uh, a lot of families, it's a nice alternative. You know, you, you know, you know it's cheaper. Uh, it's an alternative to the restaurants on the harbor. I usually have a you know, pretty long wait on a Friday or Saturday night, you know, hour and a half, two hour wait. People walking around, people are walking around, they're spending money. I think it's just a nice addition. That sounds like it. Can you clarify? So you said two or three nights. Do you yep. have the nights identified? Uh, I was going to do Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Okay. And then, is one of your other plans in your initial backup, you had indicated that you wanted to go to different locations? Are you here now just to request just to be able to here or as an option? Because it's a new thing, I want to see how it works. Uh, I mean, I, I would like to have the options for sure. Uh, that might work, it might be great, it might not work. You know, so I don't want to tie myself into just one spot. You know, so I mean, of course, maybe if that didn't work, do the beach park and lots so of lighthouses. Like and I've also talked to the girl who does the digging. You know, uh, I actually went to her and approached her that I want to make sure we didn't step on her toes. And she was like, no, I want to work together with you. She's like, I'll have a food truck night. So I mean, it's, uh, I, I think it's a nice thing we have, you know. That's great. I hope you can go for it, yeah. I think we didn't want to pin okay. down particular nights in case nice. it rains. Yeah, the weather. Well, right. Right. Thursday, yeah. Friday, Saturday. Yeah, but you're right. We didn't talk if it about rains that. on a Thursday, you might want to go on a Tuesday. Right. You know, so we didn't yeah. really put the specific days. Right. It yeah. also has to do a lot with fishing, too. Like, we had a windy, we had three or four windy days, the boats didn't get out. I mean, the whole purpose is to try to show people fish that's caught on a Tuesday can be served on Thursday, you know, to try to really give people the idea that like, you know, they're getting fresh sheep. Right. So you're looking for an alternate day as well? No, on the dinghy, for example, we didn't put days. Oh, we never just, just provide that flexibility. Right. To provide. But I wonder if you're going to go on a fishing pier, if you have to be able to force. That's a, I 
think the general office will have to be. Yeah. Um, the spaces are open. I mean, I, I work here, so I'm not going to. I know I kind of know the schedule, and, and, uh, and we have a loading schedule. And the last thing I'm going to do is ensure my fellow people are working and get in the way. You know, that's, that's, not, that's not what I'm trying to do. Uh, questions from the board? Yeah, I sort of noticed that it said that you're the only person who's going to be doing this. You're not going to have teenagers helping you. Oh, no, I, I mean, I'm, I have four kids myself. So okay. Yeah, no, All this right. is, this, this truck basically needs two to three people. No, 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 no. And aside from lobster rolls or maybe oysters, are you going to have fish and chips? Okay, so that's for like chips, the kids. Fish and chips. The, the We're kids. doing nuggets and fries for kids. Okay. It's a, it's a pretty basic menu, though. Yeah. The main focal point is going to be stuff caught off the boat, served. As quick as we can. That'd be a fish just. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 This is this is such a great um, story for our community as well to be able to you know showcase it to folks like uh, Joey Stenner and Kalani's and stuff. It's a really good economic yeah, we, we definitely have to be creative. You know what I mean? We're, we're, there's only a handful of us left in the whole state that are fishing full time. You know, so we we have to be creative to keep our business viable. And that's just what I started thinking this last year. Like, what am I going to do to get myself through tough times with you know things we deal with in fishing? And this is something I came up with. And I did I did have a lot of years. My family owned a restaurant, so I had restaurant experience. I grew up working at the Blue Moor. I've been around. It's kind of putting up both of my careers together. But I, just, I think your point about the fear, I, I have no doubt that you'll um, be respectful because it's your, it's your co workers. Um, we generally give the offer of Heather license just to get an idea. We don't specifically say certain things, but I think your point about the fear, I, I hate to see. A conversation down downstream. Let's say money <laughs> downstream. Day. You're there on a Friday night, and then all of a sudden the other offers are like, wait a minute, why don't aren't I out here? I mean, I think we need to sort of think about that. I mean, maybe we want a food truck to bring down there, but I doubt it. Um, how do we how do we address that? Uh, there is no other food truck besides the dinghy, and they've already met. Oh, there's sure. another hop. Oh, that's right. Yeah, right. And I know she's she's on board with the thing. So just just to right. I was, sorry, I was Kevin and I really spoke about that. I was thinking about the ice cream oh, truck and, and, and the other like, oh, there are ice cream vendors others like that that have no permission to go there. <laughs> yeah. Right. 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 Okay. Yeah. Right um, and we're still waiting, but this is pending the Board of Health approval. Let's get everything in, but not approved yet, right? Yeah, don't they have to inspect your truck? They did that already. Everything's approved. Did you oh, get your license? I got my license. Yep. Oh, well, you're on top of it, Kevin. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I have everything. So let's, let's make sure when we do the motion that we acknowledge that. Uh, any questions from the audience? So, right here, we have a motion. Move it. Move that the select board approve a hawker and peddler license for the municipality food truck. Period. Period. <laughs> by Mrs. Canfield. Second. Second by Mrs. Connolly. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank Aye. you very much. Thank you. Can't wait to get when you start it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm sorry. There's a new motion in front of you that's been passed out to you because I'm like, what the heck? That was really changed. So, oh, sorry, no, I just I'd like to rescind my motion and yeah. uh, replace no. with move that the select board approve a oh, oh this is my yeah. okay. new yeah. offer and peddler license for this family food truck to sell a variety of cooked seafood, dinner, and sandwiches at City of Public Beaches Town here in the Lighthouse parking lot from 5 um, p.m. to 8 30 p.m. from June 1st through September 30th. Mm -hmm. Second. Amended motion by Mrs. Canfield, second by Mrs. Connolly. All in favor? Aye. Yes. <laughs> you missed that, so just a little bit more specific, okay. Kevin. That's yeah. all. You're all set. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. so much. Thank you. And wait, when are you starting? Asking first. Hopefully soon. Okay. Right. Let's go. Can you?
stand up so that I will. No, okay, sure. Sure. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, so next on our agenda is to interview some board committee openings. Uh, so does everybody have their yes? Uh, is uh, Mr. Fleming, Frankie Fleming here? Okay. Look it up. And just to note that Mr. Fleming also applied last year. He had his interview last year, but there were no openings at that time. Oh. Yes. So this is the second time you've seen him. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So um, just for the record, Mr. Fleming, would you just state your name and address, and then just tell us a little bit about. Uh, your experience again with some new members, and I'm sure we don't recall everything that you shared with us over a year ago. So, thank you, Greg Fleming, 47 Turner Road. Um, I have been an attorney for 17 years. I am in a real estate land use firm right now in Quincy. Part of the reason, obviously, to uh, give back to the community in the best way I know how. Um, is time is important. Put myself on a committee if I can that where I can actually utilize my everyday work life and use it to help the community. I don't want to waste anyone's time by going to a committee where I know nothing and learning curve significant. Do a lot of zoning vote board work just through my job, so I'm familiar with the process. It generally works, obviously. Every board is unique. Every town has their own bylaws, but generally how things generally work are uniform throughout the state. So with that, um, I'm trying to just get involved in uh, the zoning board was the best way how obviously the board lost two, uh, two significant members for, for, for us. Uh, and uh, we are opening, but obviously to serve our the uh, board best themes fit is this fantastic other places. Well. well, thank you. Your uh, experience is, in, you know, obviously so relevant. Um, and it's tricky to have somebody with your expertise want to serve on this board. Um, I'll, I'll defer to the liaison first if you have any additional questions. Oh, I'm totally deferring to our newest member. Oh, okay. so done. <laughs> I yield my time in this answer. <laughs> okay. Um, I actually just like your experience is excellent. Board. I just have one question to you, and I, I, I was on for like almost three years, and I don't recall you attending. Yes. As far as like the client, do no. you anticipate you have a lot as much as you have for a teacher or so? No. Clients that go to a situation? Uh, my, at my firm, yeah. I, we have yet to have a situate, uh, we have situate clients, but none before the ZBA, nor any in the pipeline. I okay. ran this past the mm -hmm. partnership at the firm. Okay. Or whether or not there would be any issues, and none were flagged. Okay, no, that's great. It just okay. has in the past we've had lawyers that have been accusing themselves of almost everything. So, that's not really Yeah, it's not. So, wanted to make sure. Great question. Andrew? No, I mean, yeah, it wasn't a, it was kind of all totally qualified, yeah. but it uh, wasn't for kind of the perseverance alone. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, my question is always why now? Now we know because there's an opening. So, um, well, there we go. This is lovely, I think. Thank you for coming back. Yeah. Appreciate it. So, this would be for an alternate position. The, uh, yeah, so traditionally, but it kind of step up, right? Like, so the alternates right. become full members right. once the two, and the two members that step down are both. Voting members. But the way that the board runs, it's all different staff. Mm -hmm. Everybody votes just in case, right? And the alternates also um, ask questions. So they're full of the Yeah, great. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Well, thank you again for coming thank you. in. Uh, we usually vote for board appointments at the end of the mm -hmm. meeting as we go through them all. So, terrific candidate, we appreciate you stepping forth and helping our community because this, in my opinion, is one of the most important uh, roles of the select board is to find great talent like yourself on all of our committees to really help move the town forward. It's a lot of work, so thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for a great time.
Next for coming in. <laughs> Is James Scott, Jim here? How are you this evening? Uh, so just for the record, Jim, your name and address and uh, to find for uh, looks like the formal housing trust is your first choice and your second choice is the economic help. Uh, James Duff from 367 Country Way. And somebody said to me here, trying to fill a role on affordable housing. Who said that to you? Uh, I can't write that. <laughs> Somebody with my, the initial SD? Yeah, I don't know why I said that. Um, I, <laughs> I am a commercial real estate I'm a banker. And I've done over the years, I can't even tell you how many affordable housing projects that I find. Never done one in the town situation that I can recall. Um, I've been a board member of South Shore Housing Development Court, uh, as well as Habitat for Community. So that's kind of like the big scale of affordable housing at a small scale. So uh, if I can help, I'm happy to help. Thank you. We do a meeting, and we set out. Of folks like you with that type of expertise, and so we can continue to move forward in this So, thank you for stepping forward. Um, any? Well, I don't care about your opinion a lot because you've been on that thing. Yeah, no, like I said, I mean, that's always a challenge is people being on board really understanding the the uniqueness of the system and the challenges and everything that you look at. We've got some good folks that have some good housing authority expertise. I know you know, Steve also used to be. Um, uh, Irish is the chair right now, also that is called from a learning perspective. Um, so he's been the most helpful, and I could imagine that you're really just um, well, thank you for yeah. stepping forward. It's a really important committee. I know you say that about a lot of committees, but um, you know, as everyone knows the board of house is a big challenge for state, and we've been lucky to have been able to do things like the Boston Green, but we have to do more. Uh, I think the state is going to need to look at CPC funding as far as not being as responsive or as if we're not doing as much as we probably should do. So, thank you. Your resume answers it for me about uh, the pace and how some of these committees operate. We were on capital planning four years ago, so you know, uh, it's, and get the, it might be 15 years ago, my time's more than this big, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, you get yeah. the, yep, oh, yeah, the yeah. process, yep, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Thank you, Jim, for stepping well, forward. And well, I see that Nancy Chapman designed. I didn't know that, so I'd just like to thank her for her service. She's served for the last three years. So, um, thank you, Nancy. She had a lot of experience in formal housing as well in um, the state. So, great. Um, so, as I had said earlier, we will vote at the end of the day, so you don't have to stay here and listen to anything else. Oh, we don't? Okay. Uh, no, and great. you're welcome to. Okay. But, you know, you don't have to. Thank you so much for moving forward. Okay. We appreciate it. And then next um, um, is Barry Curlin here. Yes. Hi, Barry. How are you? Good. Thank you. You're here for to um, submit your application for the Economic Development Committee. Yeah. And then could you just tell us your name and address and a little bit about uh, what you hope to contribute? Sure. Uh, my name is Barry Curlin. Uh, I'm at 17 Cedric Drive. Uh, so up in North Situate. Um, I, what I hope to contribute is um, partially my background, but uh, a lot of my ambition, which is that uh, dirty to say the least, I grew up in a small town in Vermont, um, married a South Shore girl, but, uh, what I think was sort of the law of South Shore gravity, here I am. Um, her parents grew up uh, just down the road, or her mother grew up just down the road around first parish, um, and I would like to be able to support um, a thriving community uh, that has wonderful new traditions, coastal traditions, situated traditions, uh, but also is able to bring in really great new businesses um, that are representative of the community. Uh, and 
my buy-in here is not just that I live here, but I have two young sons who I want to grow up in a wonderful place. Um, I know a little bit of the story uh, based on multiple generations going back to my wife's family in the South Shore, and I just am thrilled to see the taking part in the uh, incredible growth. Uh, and I would like to be part of that. I think I bring a little bit of it with a somewhat unique career starting in government, moving to investments that were specifically focused on finding ways to uh, almost use um, uh, economic conditions as infrastructure, uh, working with uh, stakeholders and really seeking out stakeholders to figure out just how to bring authority into creating um, economic conditions, creating policy conditions uh, to help businesses grow. So uh, that's why I'm here today. And uh, more specifically, uh, Mr. Goodrich, what your question, as you say, always is, why are you actually here right now? Um, I was sitting in front of uh, Lucky Finn last fall, uh, heard Sue Pisa talking about economic development, uh, didn't really know exactly what she was talking about. They were talking about bikes as part of everything. And I just stuck my head in. Um, and she reached out to me uh, and said, can you come to a meeting? So I think to a few of the meetings. All right. Great, that was really my question. We're glad we've been able to participate in any of the meetings and really understand all the great work that they're working on today. Yeah. So thank you for clarifying that. And time committed for you, not an issue to attend. Not an issue to attend. Uh, my wife and I are looking for a little more freedom from the uh, three-year-old and eight-month-old. Um, <laughs> and this is the responsible freedom that we're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> Susan, did you have any questions? I do not. Thank you. Maria Sachs, uh, I'm always good by us. That's the best for it. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I, I, you, so I keep my mouth shut. Just uh, yeah. it's a hot fire around here. Yeah. 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 Irishman um, and uh, BC's plus. No, I just, I just, I love the diversity of, of expertise, and um, I, I love that. Just want to get involved, um, care about it. So, thank you. Chair Connolly, all of those things, it looks like someone was up recruiting out of the Central Drive neighborhood because I, I know <laughs> another, it wasn't Central Drive, but it was oh, yeah. one of those streets. So. Well, I, I'm happy to hear a young family. Uh, we were talking about that a couple of weeks ago that we need more people with not easy to have a young family, but we need the younger people to not just step up. So we appreciate the fact that you need to get away from the three <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't, I don't want to, but uh, having that independence uh, allows us to come home and, and get those smiles. Um, yeah, thank you. And, and uh, I, I should say that, that uh, it's we're believers that you can't complain about it unless you try to help out if you have the opportunity. Um, I didn't know the exact route in, but I've been uh, fortunate up in the Cedric Drive neighborhood to um, be able to speak to people who uh, show the way. Um, you know, Susan shows up every once in a while across the street from our neighbors who are uh, involved in town government as well. So um, we're very fortunate. And being able to figure out how to solve problems. Well, if I can, I would say that I thought that the Silver Heel, Heel Foundation is very interesting because we obviously have a lot of historic sites in town. Right. And particularly, we are in need of some people I'm going to recruit right now. <laughs> We're in need of people to help us decide what we want to do with the Mordecai Lincoln House that we just bought. It's a major historic property, mm -hmm. but we need some real citizens who are uh, willing to lead. Uh, the charge to make sure we're able to make it financially viable and that it is treated the way we want it to be treated. Um, but it's we need to get it off the ground now. So, um, and it, I view it as an economic development type of project as well because we bring a lot of Lincolns to town, perhaps. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you. I'm thrilled, thrilled to hear that. Uh, my focus right now is on working with nonprofits and being a connector, um, using that diverse background to connect. Uh, go out and figure out who stakeholders are. Uh, it's not just stakeholder management, it's really stakeholder discovery as well. Um, and then be able to work with disparate groups using essentially project management techniques to drive things forward. Um, so uh, this goes from education to, as we see, historical preservation, uh, which is a lot of elbow pace plus money, right? <laughs>
um, but also this is my um, creativity. And so I'm glad to go with that and make yourself in the Thank you so much for doing the homework for being ready to hit the ground running on this
uh, large corporations to determine how to use their space, how to enable and expand their businesses across different regions. I have um, now moved into product and I work uh, across a uh, nine hundred person organization right now to get people to align and build and create new business uh, value within that company as well. So um, what I tend to try to explain myself and my work and myself as is somebody who comes, does the listening and tries to get complex multi-stakeholder groups to listen to each other and build things together. And that's what I hope to do here um, with situate business owners and hopefully enabling future business as well. So thank you. Yeah. I'm curious what was some of the feedback that you heard when you interviewed some of the businesses. Um, so, so yeah, well, I mean, so I, I live close to North Central and I think there's like a, a desire and an ache to do more. And I think one of the quotes that stood out for me was, this place would be really awesome. And the level of frustration at like not knowing what, what can be done in the near term to, um, you know, fully realize the vision certain folks have for that area. I think I would love to help. I don't, you know, and I think being able to play a role at least creating a platform so that they can be heard and try to work with those would be really interesting and exciting in terms of, you know, building something here. Um, and building on existing businesses because there are so many examples of things going well. And it was so cool to hear the new food truck idea. Um, and I was like, oh, could he come to the North Situate as well? Like, why does it just have to be frustrating? Why, you know, what are the other opportunities for these new types of ideas? So, yeah, some of the feedback I heard. Thank you. Questions? Yeah. No, I just, as you were speaking, you were touching on all the things that made this, this particular community really um, uh, useful to the communities to have that outreach and build those coalitions. Um, have you worked in any municipal environment? Um, I worked in municipal environments as consultant. So uh, in Los Angeles, I was working with um, LAUSD, which is the largest, second largest school district in the country. And I worked uh, in their own municipal district that I was a liaison with and doing the community outreach and planning. Yeah, so I think of your skill set and the vision very closely aligned with what you know, the, the leaders in this particular commission have been um, moving the ball forward on for a while. Um, and uh, the only reason I mentioned this book is that um, the, the overlaying all of that good work is, is always being mindful of that. You know, we, work, we work for everyone in town, basically, and it takes a lot longer than the private sector to, to move the needle. But, um, and, and that's, you know, I think obviously the front of that. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. The communication piece is a huge, huge thing that our board is talking about. Yeah, and that's, I, I have an appreciation for that too. And we've done some amount of communication strategy. So I know um, I joined the EC meeting last night and talked about some of the opportunities for communication. And that's um, yeah. yeah, I was, I was um, my video was not up, but yes, I was listening. And that was really an exciting opportunity that I heard last night as well. Good. Well, thank you for doing that. I'm like, for stepping up and welcome, huh? Thank you. I just want to say I heard two things alignment and stakeholders. And I think this committee in particular, it's it's complicated and trying to get the various stakeholders to figure out how they can align their interests so that everyone wins and that if someone doesn't always win as much, that it's still worth doing. So um because it's, this is complicated, this committee, yes. but they've made great strides over the past few years. Yeah, they've done a lot. So I think the more people we get interested in it, the better. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you. There's so many amazing qualified folks. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. So thank you for your support. Landscape architecture, mm -hmm. also in your background. I'm going to hold that out. Careful. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Um, <laughs> is there anything, I mean, 
you've seen some of the other training, you really want to stick your teeth into it because right now this is your chomp at the bed to get involved in next I mean, I have driven through North City for the last four years. Um, on my way to my grandparents' house, you now on my way to my dad's house. Right. Uh, and I'm, I have heard that it's next up in terms of a focus for some of the work that um, the town needs to do. And I'd love to play a role there. I think it's important as I live in that part of town, but also um, it's close to home or close to my heart as well. So that was really kind of the impetus. And I, you know, I was introduced to Sue, and I didn't even know there was a position open. I just said, "How can I help?" So. Yeah, thank you for stepping up. I love the energy and the experience, and that you've reached out to other committee members and seen, understand the landscape, or as much as you can going into it. Don't be more for So thank you. All right. Thank you, Grace. Thank you, Grace, thank you, thank you for your <coughs> resume and. As I said earlier, to the other candidates, we'll be going probably at the end of the meeting. Um, and Lorraine or whoever will let you know the outcome. Thanks so much, everybody. You too. You want to see if Ron's here now? Uh, yeah. Is, is, is Ron Miller, Mr. Miller, are you here? Well, so you could use it. Oh, from Syracuse. Oh, okay. Okay, um, so next on our agenda is a presentation. Tennis anymore? Um, <laughs> only because of the Jamie Gilmore and Mark Novak to talk about the City of High School Tennis Park Renovation Project. Uh, this is just a quote we'll be taking this evening. Hi, Jamie and Mark. Good evening. How are you? Well, nice to see you. Presented, uh, we started with the rec department. They're obviously on board with it. They are aware of what we're doing. But then we then met that with the DPW and get them involved in making sure they understand this, this plan and what would be involved in taking care of things, getting their input. Uh, so we did that. And then we met with uh, the school board. Even though you know they said, well, we don't, you don't have to meet with us, but we felt they we should because the whole purpose of this is to create varsity soccer, varsity tennis capable courts so that their program could be enhanced. Uh, I think you all know my personal interest in this is not to play tennis; it is to complete the beautiful thing that you guys, that we all did for the entire sports complex. The way I look at it, this is the last sore thumb in that whole beautiful work of art over there. Uh, and I think Mark's expertise when it was raised to find the right person was very easy. We've got one of the best experts living in our town. 
So I think if we could just spend a few minutes to give you an idea where we're at. Our next approach is to fill out our CPC design funding application, which is due beginning in July. We're going to do that, and then after that, we'll go into the private sector mode of presenting our idea to some of the state. Both Maura Glancy wants to be involved in that. Uh, so, you know, you retired, but you still can't leave. Um, so, without further ado, I can give you Mark Novak and his fabulous presentation. And I say, tell us anyone. Thanks, Jamie. Um, so, I will zoom through this presentation tonight. I want to be respectful of your time. Um, Again, my name is Mark Novak, I'm a registered landscape architect. I did not go to Syracuse University. Um, <laughs> although I got excited. <laughs> um, so tonight, uh, real quick introduction, um, existing conditions, we'll go over the proposed site plan, cost opinion, um, and then just a layout of what the project could be. Um, uh, next slide, please. Um, next one. <laughs> Uh, so just in overall, everyone knows where the tennis courts are. They're immediately south of the track and field. Next slide, please. Uh, the real question is right now, um, there's four tennis courts out there. We want to be able to Five is really the minimum amount of courts that you need to have in order to properly hold a high school tennis competition. Um, otherwise, your competition is going to last hours upon hours. Uh, you want to have three courts of single um, the challenge here is the slope on the eastern side, um, but if you see all the way on the right side of the slide, the uh, purple line, that's uh, what we surmise is the property. That hasn't been officially surveyed yet. We would do that as part of the next phase, uh, but through GIS and other sources, we think we have sufficient um, property in order to expand the courts uh, to the east. It would require a little bit of tree removal and some artwork associated with that board and that process. Um, generally, the courts would stay in the same place. Uh, we would need to address the slope coming down to the courts and drainage associated with that. Um, but uh, we wouldn't need to disturb any of the other elements out there. Next slide, please. Uh, some of the existing conditions, as you can see, they reached the end of their useful life. Uh, severe cracking in the courts. Uh, the posts are bleeding from overtensioning of the nets. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the surfacing itself um, is completely worn off. Uh, the pitch of the surface is out of tolerance. You need a 1% maximum slope on your tennis courts, um, and it, it is, uh, exceeds 1% currently. Next slide. Um, there's some existing uh, elements associated with the skate park and iron. That have been tagged with various elements of graffiti, artwork. Yep. Um, <laughs> so th the whole intention here is to maintain the skate park in its current location. Uh, those large concrete retaining wall blocks are not associated with the structural integrity of your skate park. So those will be removed. Um, and that will allow us to expand immediately adjacent to the, uh, to the park. Next slide, please. Uh, just a, a different view down from up on top, looking down at the courts. This is the trail up into the woods uh, that a lot of people like to you know, get away from everyone. Um, you can see the grade differential here. Uh, some young, you know, pine trees that would be removed. Um, next slide, please. Existing fencing is in, in, in tough shape. Um, and one of the next slides you'll see it, but the existing flagpole associated with the track and field will obviously remain, uh, knowing that that's a, a donated element uh, to the town. Um, and then the new um, pro stair element that's uh, recently been installed by the school, that may need a little bit of adjustment uh, to accommodate some of the work that we're proposing, um, but we can accomplish that all as well. Can you just say that again? The pro stair, it's a, uh, it's a low impact training element. Uh, Prostair is a company, I believe it's situated based. Um, it was donated, I believe, to the schools by uh, Mr. Donato, I believe. It, it was up at Harvard for a period of time. It's a great um, cardiovascular and um, uh, training program for uh, legs and stuff. Really for hockey football players, football teams using it right now in the training. 
Uh, but you run upstairs and then you slide down the slide. So you don't have that. Oh, I know. Yeah, I know. Thank you. Um, so that may need to move a little bit. Um, but not a big deal. Next slide. Here you can see uh, some of the issues with the fencing foundations like heating up out of the ground. Um, you kind of have that no man's land of trash collection in between the skate park and, and the fencing. So all those elements will, will attempt to address with the proposed concern. Next slide, please. And you can jump to the next one. Yep. So this is what we call option one. Um, it's a five port design. Um, stack on top of each other, so a five quart battery. Up in the upper right-hand corner is a storage unit. Uh, something that's kind of grown in this design is a second storage unit after our meeting with Mr. Cafferty, um, thinking that it would be great to have one uh, for athletic equipment and one for maintenance equipment that can help to service the entire uh, sporting complex up there. Um, all the way down the right side of the um, site, is a modular block retaining wall. So that would probably be a large format uh, modular block. Um, we've also looked at pricing to go with the casting place uh, wall to kind of match what we've done over at the stadium. Um, the entire facility will be surrounded with black uh, gym and fence. Most of it will be 10 foot high until you get to the spectator seating area on the left side, where the fence will dive down to about four feet high so you can get proper side lines out onto the floor. In that area where the bleacher is, we'll have a double gate uh, for maintenance access onto the courts. Um, one of the things that you don't have in the court right now is proper access to each of the courts. You only have one gate. So if somebody's playing on the court all the way to the right, or excuse me, all the way to the left where the gate is, and you want to play on a court, you have to walk through their competition in order to get to your court. So uh, we're proposing um, four player access gates in between each of the courts. Uh, the corners of the facility are chamfered in case of a little bit more of the country but style for no more cost. Um, everything will have branded windscreen um, to tie in with the branding package that we have over at the high school fields. Um, we're trying to minimize the amount of planting here, um, just a little bit straight, moment C, uh, ease of maintenance. Um, and that's generally, you know, option one. Option two, next slide, please. Uh, takes it up a notch. Um, so there's a, a little entrance plaza and spectator plaza, uh, spectator seating on both sides now. Uh, so we have a two tiered retaining wall system on the right side. Um, the first wall is about two feet high. Um, and then you have a large wall in the back holding back the grade. Um, and this allows us for a better spectating experience uh, from both ends of the court. Uh, we've also included in this option must go sports lighting. So it's a four pole system. Um, they'd be about 70 feet in height. Um, we'd be able to control the lighting completely on this site, no spill onto neighboring properties. Um, and really, the, that's the main difference between, between the two options. Um, next two slides. Yeah. We'll go to the cost opinion. So, option one, uh, just real kind of big numbers, and these can be a bit shocking. Um, but uh, option one, which is the simpler one, um, is about one and a quarter million dollars. You talked uh, about the concrete. Sorry. Yep, I will. Um, and that includes, you know, construction contingencies, soft cost for, for design, engineering, survey, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, the ad for lighting adds in another uh, 300,000. Um, and then we gave a potential deduct to go with asphalt. So there's a, there's a difference between post tension concrete and asphalt-based uh, courts. Um, we strongly recommend post tension concrete. Um, and I can talk a little bit about the differences, but really asphalt just won't last you very long. Asphalt is not the material that it used to be. Um, asphalt courts, you can only expect to have about a 12 to 15 year lifespan and potentially even shorter than that before they have to be redone. With post tension concrete, you can have a 50 year lifespan. And really all you're gonna be doing is coming in to repair the acrylic surface or, or just give it a new um, color surface over say 70, 10 years. Um, there is a cost differential between the two as is evidenced there with a $400,000 credit to stick with asphalt. Um, but in the end, 
really get a return on your investment because you're going to get 50 plus units on the residential plan. I have close budget concrete at the Kozlowski courts right now. Yes. Um, Did you say 50? 50 plus. I know. Who we'll won't have to deal with this again? And you know, give it to an MIA, a rule or whatever. What's the lifespan? Could you do a uh, hard roof? Like a court. Yeah. Like a play court? No, no, no. Like a hard, hard roof. Like a, usually it's cushion there. Oh, a cushion system. system. Yeah, yeah. You, you could. Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, it's that's more money, but that's more money than the lifespan. Um, like, again, I think there's, I yeah. know that this is primarily for the high school yeah. users, but we also have many other recreational users. Yeah. I, I think softer might be easier on their needs, and I appreciate it. Sure, it's not that huge. I think, um, the one thing that I would be concerned about is much like I'm trying. But a whole lot of watching an event, and I see kids on their scooters going around, okay. skateboarders with the skate parking and such close proximity. They see a nice, clean, clean surface. Okay. They're going out onto the surface with their skateboards and all those types of things. You could do damage to a to a cushion surface pretty quickly. Um, <clears throat> other than that, uh, you know, I, I, it's an option that can definitely be used. Um, I think as part of the process, as we if we move this forward, which you know that's the intention, um, you know obviously we're going to have to have some uh, community engagement meetings, um, and that's something that we can look at is the various types of surfacing above the base, which is either asphalt or concrete. Well, it like the reason why not. We were looking at make this last as long as possible yeah. with as little maintenance as possible, but make it look professional uh, so that the post tension concrete. Was most appealing to, to my eyes, and then also I think DPW liked it because it's like 50 years, whatever we got. And it, 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 I was not it. aware of that soft surface concept, so we'll look into that. The the basketball courts, the two that are in the fence right now, those are post tension. Um, there's no cracking in those surfaces. They have a bit of a, a challenge with the acrylic surfacing on top that's popping off. Because they weren't uh, constructed appropriately, they didn't put up a vapor barrier underneath, so you got some vapor transmissions. Um, but you know, assuming everything's done and it would be um, appropriately here, um, fifty plus years is what you're So that's option one. Option two, um, just because there's more earthwork, we have to continue to see from ten to fifteen percent on this one. Um, but uh, you know, on the base, you're at 1.4 million, 300,000 for the lights. You know, I think generally speaking, you're in the $2 million range um, for five tennis courts out there, post tension concrete um, with the full package. Next slide. Uh, can I just ask you a question? Sure. I don't understand the duct 394 for asphalt. Does that mean the 1.4 includes the other it, concrete it option? It includes the so uh, post tension concrete. Okay. Yep. Any other questions on the asphalt? Again, they're very high level. Um, yeah. Um, I think maybe too much of the weeds, but. Um, is the light, just thinking about the financing and getting over that hurdle, is the lighting something that can be added later or is it really screwed up because you got No, it could be. Um, you know, what we would do um, is install all the infrastructure, so put all the conduit in the ground. Right, um, and then we would probably even consider installing the, uh, the bases. Uh, so you don't have to get a drill right out there to do the foundations in the future. Um, and then all you would need to do is drop the lights. How was that roughly guessing how would that affect that part of the number? Uh, it would take it down probably in the $50,000 range. Right. 50 and 60. To do the prep. It would be fit instead of 300000 it would be right. 50 and 60. Right, just to get prepped. Yeah. Yep. So yep. Okay. We think that revisit. The, yeah. Yeah. The challenge with that is all too often when you just put the bases in, the lights rarely happen, and then it's just a reminder that you only went halfway. <laughs> no, that's a, that is a very good point. But I mean, that's just what I've seen in the letter. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Um, so in the end, just a 
a little on close touch of concrete. Um, it's it's rest concrete, much like the parking deck. You know, they put cables every couple of feet, and really it consolidates the concrete that shrinks it, and ties it all together, so it floats in one giant slab. Um, and that's what gives us all all this real structural integrity and properties. Um, next slide, please. So you, on the upper left-hand image, you can see some of the tensioning uh, cords coming out the side. Um, and that's the finished product before the sifting seam gets applied. Um, down on the bottom is a cord that we did at Babson uh, University. Um, so it's, it's a high quality product that isn't just for colleges, universities, and, and, and private entities anymore. They're being installed uh, for municipalities. We do them uh, for the time. For where? When? Over at um, Legion Field. That's, that's our story. Thank you. Um, Thank you for having us. No, it's a great pleasure. Um, Karen, you have a comment, and that is that um, I would like to thank the school committee to not just be passing on this. I would like them to be active on this. I would like the high school athletic department to be equally active on this. I would like to see the tennis um, coaches and, and the players come out to support this project. Whatever we decide we want to do, it's necessary for them to do that. They're not interested. Well, they have expressed interest. Yeah, so our initial meetings got the Eagles part of, um, and, and uh, he, he said that he could facilitate meetings with the coaches. Um, and the school board was, uh, school committee was definitely uh, very interested. Well, we need our active support, and I can't emphasize that more, and I will emphasize it tonight, <laughs> and I'll emphasize it going forward. Um, and I want to thank Jamie for keeping on with this because he and I had long talks about in the athletic fields. How can we get this big project passed? And as much as we would have wanted to address the issue of the 90 foot baseball field as, and the tennis courts, politically speaking, we, we just couldn't do it. So I don't think it's right for this. It, it is. It is. So I'm very supportive of it. You know, I do have questions about the lights, believe it or not. I don't know how much people play under the lights. I do know that if it's close to the neighborhood and you've got people playing under lights at night, it can be annoying to people. So, but I think those are questions for as we get further down. And what time do the lights get shut off right. and all those fun things? Yeah. And there's other options for the lights too. Um, you know, they're, they're smaller lights, but you have to install more of them. Um, and then, you know, the courts might have to get a little bit wider because we have to do lights in between the courts. Um, really with the system that we're proposing here, it can tie all into the system that's currently at the field that can be controlled by recreation or ice off on it. Wait a minute, it's Well, I, thank you for all the work and I, it's, it's come a long way, so I appreciate it. Andrew, do you have any questions? No, this is great. Is it? I do have one question. Um, and I see the um, like envelope of where you're going to build, and that there's a slope way off. So I would want to know where you're going to clear to if I were at a Like, there's a lot of nice trees right there. Yeah. So, like, how much, the least amount you'd have to clear? Yeah, and that's something for that. For the abutter, too, because that's for sound, right? Um, so maybe another presentation if we can understand that. Um, and then I want to obviously yeah, yeah. know how much we pay for lights before we put more lights out. So I'm going to like throw Nancy a going on that. <laughs> so I'm not all about putting lights up if we don't know how much we pay for the electricity. Yeah. Thank you. Well, there's time for that. I, I definitely appreciate and agree with that. Yeah. At the same time, if the other sports functions have lights, there's no reason why this one should not. Because yeah, we I mean, treat all sports equally. It may possible. be a way to get our audit done faster. If all around for that four minutes. Sure. <laughs> in in respect to your um, plant <laughs> removal and planting question, I, I failed to mention that the estimate did include infill planting okay. um, within that area above the retaining wall. Okay. Um, but you're right; there are some nice trees. Yeah, um, and it's the sound buffer too, right? To a certain extent, I think you know the. Side earth, side, yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
And what we can do uh, when we submit for the design proposal, uh, we can have the surveyor actually go out and locate tree by tree and tell us how big they are, um, as opposed to just giving us a mass of vegetation and saying, hey, we're clearing out this swamp. Yeah. And Mark, I just, has this gone in front of CPC? What, what oh, is yeah. the financing plan? Well, okay. we presented this to CPC already. All right. So, so we're, it's we're about to go, yes, we're about to go to to uh, requisition for a design plan, okay. which is do we get so they have it? So they have approved the funds yet? Yeah. No, but they no have funds have been approved. Okay, the, okay. So no. sure where you were the, the intent, just based on conversations with CBC in, in previous meetings, is we would go for design funding, a uh, special town meeting that's approved, then design will <coughs> happen over the winter, um, and then go for annual town meeting for construction. Okay. I don't have any other questions. I mean, I think it looks great. It obviously is needed. Um, but uh, yeah, I think we can get some answers on the, the tree mitigation. That, Very that important. Involved. Very important. Have you been in front of conservation at all? Not yet. There is uh, no requirement for, we're outside of um, the regulatory book. Oh, you are? Even with removing those? Okay. Yeah. I think we would have to go in front of planning um, for a stormwater permit application. Um, most likely because of the disturbed area. Um, but uh, I do not believe we would have to go on that. Anything additional? No? Well, thank you well, all thank for your time. Thank you. No, thank you. 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 Contracts to go over. Highlight of the night. Kevin and his crew. Um, right. Who wants to do first? I think the first contract is for the sodium uh, carbonate. Um, I'm having issues with my computer, my memory is full, so it's not just like anything. So it's a contract to Gordon and Remington Corp. gas and hydroxide. Um, and the value is $350,000. Um, so this has been through a uh, co op that we do with a lot of the other towns in the South Shore. Uh, this is used. Um, you want to keep the plan just to keep the plan. All right, so any uh, big changes in cost here? Yeah. Like it went up, what, 17%? Yeah, I'm looking at it. I believe it could go up. Uh, the bulk purchase looks like it went up 17%. Looks like it was your chemical sale. Yep. And this went out on a bid? So yeah, went out on a bid through the uh, through a cooperative for West Park. Oh, okay. yeah. So it's East and Mass Council Cooperative. Uh, any questions? Okay. Um, it's 28% in first last year, 70% was made. It seems like the price of chemicals is kind of all over the place. A lot of stuff is down, a lot of stuff is up. Is it a particular category of chemical that's it's like a lot of sodium is down? But. Um, see, a lot of these chemicals that are on this list on the breakdown, we don't use. We only use certain chemicals because other, other towns use some of those other chemicals. So some of it's directly related to shipping, with the trucking costs, the additional trucking costs um, that have been coming in. Um, Obviously, when the new plant's up and running, these all our chemicals are changing. So, um, we're looking for the best that cost wise for treating ourselves. Okay. Any further questions? Okay. Mrs. Campbell, anything? No, I just. 
Second. All right, then do I have a motion? Move to award contract to Board and Environmental Corporation of Fall River to provide sodium carbonate at the unit price of 27 uh, cents per pound, not, not to exceed 180,000 for fiscal year. Motion by Mr. Goodrich, second by Mrs. Canfield. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Zero. So the one good thing about the chemicals is we did have peers before different, uh, different pounds were potentially might not have chemicals, but treatment, and there was talking consortium about sharing chemicals and and everything else. So that seems to be improved much. So that, that's obviously great. I think the rest of them running out of stuff. We'll look in a test. Um, I believe the next contract we had was for West End Well Investigation. This is another water project. Um, Back who one of the studies and actually talking to the board is it was brought up about looking for additional wells in the West End because it's a different uh, water resource area. And that's one of the things money was allocated. We put out an RFP to five local engineering firms. Well, not local, you know, um, they're all over the country, but um, that we, we have the confidence in. And, Fortunately, we only get back two uh, that we received in value. We'd like to have all five, but um, we went to the most advantageous uh, engineering firm, which was Patrick Tucker. Just award them with something else as well? FEMA consultant. Sure. Uh, FEMA consultant? Yeah. Okay. Different branch of the company. So they're going to basically go out and identify. They, they have a hydrogeologist to work on that and try to talk to Samaria and then they'll potentially put some wells in place to see what the yield would be. Okay. And then that's kind of the first steps of ongoing development. And when you say West End, could you define that? Is it just west of 3 days? I know there's some other areas that so we looked at a lot of areas. Um, yes, the way it was worded, it was the West End, so we considered it anything west of 3A. We looked at a couple areas. One of the areas of interest is actually the town of Situate owns property in the town of Nola, which there used to be at the end, it used to be a very wet area. That's one area we're interested in um, discussing and um, potentially doing something. Um, on other notes, we have met with some of the the people that own the cranberry box, talking to them about different aspects and different things that we can do. Um, so they make will this rookie evaluated that as well? Okay. Yep. Um, and that's where we are. So we were, we were back and forth on the two both proposals. We got were very good proposals um, by some very good qualified people. And um, you know, we went back and forth multiple times. The board. Yeah. So, I'm sorry, this is part of the 10 year plan, uh, water plan thing is just in there. Um, we'll talk about this. Here's the first one. Sorry. I'm just curious timeline. When, when they would, when we would get like results from them looking at all these options. Um, I would like to say we would have some hard results within a year, hopefully, if we could get some, some wells done. But what we had from the other three firms is that they just weren't able to bid it because they're too busy. Yeah. And they would have trouble even getting well uh, technicians out to you know, the physical trucks to do the wells and everything else. So I'm hoping it's, I'm hoping it's fairly Soon, but I can't. I can't promise it because I don't know how long it's gonna, how much effort they're gonna put into it. It appeared to be um, a good contract. We got a schedule with it. Though. This is not for a step we're going in. And remember, just to dole and well, so you know, multiple years just to get permitted. So even if we found this tomorrow, we, you know, you could still be looking at multiple years to get a permanent approved by the DEP to use for drinking water. And Nancy, where's the scheme for that? There's an appropriation for this. We seem to be, have been looking for the elusive West End water solution. Do we have any reason to believe that 
it could happen? Or is it, did we really not look hard enough before? I mean, I, I can't figure out why multiple boards have discussed this over many, many, many years. So, I'll answer. Yeah, no, I always have an answer. I mean, we have, we have faith. I mean, you know, we're, we're looking, we're looking at some different areas in this, this different technologies with the wells. Um, you know, we're hoping we could do it. Um, you know, we met with the hydrogeologist, actually, Andrew was with us and went over different options. He seemed positive, but, but they're always positive. You know, right. Will we get the right flow? We don't know if we're going to get PFAS. We don't know what type if there's any contamination there. So it is it's it's tricky. And then you have to do the whole section of getting approved. But having wells are, are key for our infrastructure to keep it all up more well water with use is better because it's used with less treatment. Right. So um well it's just been elusive. To, no, back in back years ago they had the double well field well set to go and they never followed up on it. The permit actually expired, so we had to redo it all over again. I, I played a little. I, I went in and said, "Oh, yeah, we're going to do this now for the PEP." And I said, "Oh no, you're not." But we gave it a shot. Um, but we had to go out and we do all the testing and approve it. So that was there back years ago. It was just never executed. So. Okay, thank you. All right. Does anyone else have any quick question? In the backup, but so Andrew mentioned there is part of this in the works master plan. I thought in the backup it said this is required by GDP. Did I read that correctly? To be looking into these sources? I think the approval would be required one. Yeah, I that's why I I noted it. I was like, that doesn't make sense to me. Um, and then the other question about <coughs> fogs and other places. So when you go to test these sites, what's the process for going? Like, how do you how do you test a private land? Like, what what do we need to do for that? So obviously that's a tricky part because right. we have to have an area. I believe it's a diameter of 400 feet circle that's that there's no development nearby that we could use. So one of the first things that the engineering firm does is go through our maps and figures out where there is areas that we could test for and then they can get um, geological setup underneath and look at what the soils are and everything else if they can't get water out of those areas or if they think they can get water. You don't know if you can actually get water to actually put the drills on the ground and start drilling. They don't exclude private land and then houses? They try to, yes, we try to pick an area that we have a 400 foot area. You know, because obviously you can't put something if there's a whole table in that area. You right. can't use that because you know they have septic systems or pesticides that want it has to be kind of an undeveloped area. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, Study one of the things we have to update our tanks. They're um, they're ancient, honorable. They're still functioning fine, but there's a lot of safety features that have to be done to them. One of the things that we would have to do if we were going to paint them or do any work to them is take one offline. Our fear is that we cannot take one offline without losing fire protection as well as service for the summer. So when you paint a tank, not in the winter, in the summer, so we, we can't physically do it. So what we've done is Back a while ago, we requested additional funds to potentially build a new tank right next in that general area next to the other one, tie it in so then we can take down one of the other tanks, maybe one on Freelman, depending how everything goes, or we build the other one um, the proper standards as well as clean it out and do repairs to it. So uh, we went out with an RFP, we sent it out to 
a bunch of firms. We did get one proposal. The one proposal was through environmental partners who has experience in this type of work, and it, the price was on par with what we were expecting. He didn't, they didn't know they were the only one. And I'll ask Susan's question. What's the timing of this one? This is engineering, so I, I think this can take off quicker. Um, I talked to one of the principals over there, Paul Millette, and he was very enthusiastic about it. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping it goes sooner and then maybe we have funds set aside to do a, to actually go out to bid for this. But um, obviously we need our cost estimates and everything else for us to know what we're going to do. In the type of tank, it's going to be a precast steel tank or something like that. Okay. Uh, questions from the board? Side. This is Hi, Kent Aaron's side. Um, thanks. Um, I should have asked this from the lot prior discussion, but do you, these funds are both you say are appropriated, the others were, were appropriated. Are they um, reflected in our current water rates? Yes, these were funded from the water rates. Oh, okay. Um, thank you. Um, that was my question. Okay. So my so, question, yes, my question is the action sought to award the engineering contract fully for design, bidding, and construction services. So I was confused by construction services. It's only to engineer so that it can be constructed, right? So, for example, in that contract, they would also have a representative. They would be handling some paperwork. They may have a representative on site one day a week. What we typically do is we engineer a record. We require them to come out weekly to do an inspection to make sure it's being built the standards and specifications they set forth. So that way we can ensure the project complies with everything the engineer has asked And I was hoping it would include construction area. <laughs> it seemed like a market. No, that would probably be, that would be a lot of money also. That's I, I thought we were getting every deal. Oh, deal. Yeah. Can I ask a follow-up on Ray? Yeah. So the actual construction now has not been reflected because we don't know those costs. And we will review that during our rate presentation because there's a slide on that. Well, I assume there's a slide on that. Yeah, but I mean, one of the things, you know, looking through the backup and thinking about this, and we've talked about it multiple times before, is there's all of these projects that, infrastructure projects that need to get done, have to get done. And, you know, we really just can't. Do it in, we can't approve them incrementally without looking at the burden on the rate payers going forward for all of these coming down the way. And I know we keep, we talk about it every time we do the rates, um, but I, I'm a little nervous not having that had a chance to review all that information. Is to approve this, this go forward. Yes, we have this design, but what if down the road we say, yeah, we got to spend 10 million, million, we're spending 50 million on the Plans and we just spend 10 months a year because something failed, we might have to wait on this. You know, it's it's the prioritization and knowing what it's going to do to impact the rate the rate payers is my favorite. Yes, it's like cruise forward in the presentation. The new water tank construction would have a 3.85% rate impact if it was incorporated in the rates. Say that again. Sorry, it's really hard to hear today. I'm not too close. It's the, the lowest. The, the new water tank construction would have a 3.85% estimated rate impact if it were to be rolled into the rates in this current rate set process. And that's the construction of the tank, not the contract that's going to be Thank you, Danielle. That's <laughs> Is that our only option is to do it through water rates? We can't do it through is the water rate or through. I'm just asking, I, does it have to come through water rates? It will have to come through water rates that isn't borrowing, so it's going to increase the debt service that is not sufficient necessarily falling off to cover it. It depends on how fast it's going to move. If it's two years out of construction, you don't need to address it in your rates currently. Thank you. Uh, 
where uh, I, you know, when Mark Cloud was leaving, I asked him what some of his biggest concerns are with our water system. And he did say he was very concerned about the age of the tanks and the status of the tanks. So we're pushing this a little harder. We're going to be pushing it harder because that's no tank up there and we are working on it. You have to talk about it here. We have a, you know, and I think um, the schedule we did yesterday, our patient just pulled out. I think they said that construction we the construction commission. So, I mean, if everything went off right, we could be looking to, by the end of 2024, commission that and get the tag in place. Follow the light, be able to bid in the next question. I'm sorry? If, if it goes according to plan, we should be able to bid. In the next fiscal year. Okay. Is Rivers on what we're doing these five and here parts? I mean, there's some, there's some of the bid on our water treatment plant, Haley and Aldridge, and other ones that have great proposals. So these are the same people all the time, and I get it, they understand our system, they know it, but they also seem very busy. Uh, I just didn't know if there's any No, I mean, we, we went out. How many firms did we do on the evaluation for the sewer treatment plant? We, we went to 20, we bumped it up to 20 for uh, facilities evaluation of the school treatment plant. Yeah, uh, it could be between 15, I, I probably 18 to 20, but we did a, a much larger number and expanded it because this is not typically what we get for people calling up at the last minute and just not turning in um, estimates. And um, you know how many responses we received? The due date that was today, I got one. So we're in discussions. We may postpone that whole project until things calm down a little bit and we can get better responses. We haven't looked at pricing or anything like that. What are you giving everybody 30 days, 60 days to respond? We extended that deadline. We extended it. We got a lot of emails saying thanks for okay. sending it along, but we can't take it on. We don't have to staff. We realize that, Andrew, and that's not yeah, typical. No, that's that's we expanded for the, for the sewer treatment plant, too. Yeah, I think even Danny was calling up anybody who was complaining about sewer just to evaluate it, but I thought we were up to 20. And um, we got one more yeah. yeah, and national firms, all of the national firms, we're going to cover this type on um, easy and, you know, just so. Yeah. Well, it's just good, it's good to know. I mean, just. We were at, before this meeting, we were sitting down discussing, do we step back? We're gonna read the proposals and approve them, the one proposal we got, but do we, do we step back and wait? You know, we have to evaluate, do we, do we have to get going on it? Or do we wait to see what the, what the climate is? Does everybody have any questions? Yeah, um, do I have a motion? Select board of board of engineer and contract for the new elevated storage tank at the environment partners at the amount of $346,360. Move by Mr. Goodrich. Second. Second by Carson. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And if I can, if we didn't think the firm. Do it, we, we would not bring it forward. Yeah. Actually, environmental partners is relatively new to the situation. The first project they did for us was the Sea Point Sewer. Right. So, mm -hmm. They're actually relatively new to the project. I think my only hesitation is if we we haven't had a rate discussion yet, and if we, we can't take it. I am. <laughs> I am. Um, well, I think Nancy explained that what we just approved was already. Uh, we have we have funds in in the bank for this right now, right. but we don't have funds for it, the construction of it. It would be right. 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 So if we engineer it and then we don't have money for it because it's going to add so much to our rates. I, I that's my only. I know it's kind of. What do you do first, right? 
Preface the three presentations we, we plan not to take an hour and a half of your time. Um, we don't expect you to take any um, votes tonight. As usual, this is kind of like a we'll throw it all out you, at you and then you just tell us what you want more information on. So, transfer station is our first one up. Thank you. So, um, we had a rate increase on the mattresses. Back in April, we had a rate increase on the uh, stickers for that, effective in January. And that was to fund the fifth staff person and also the hauling costs and the debt service costs. So those issues are still out there when we talk about the transfer station. And there's some capital projects in the queue. One of the more concerning things that we're trying to pin down right now is the C and D volume is declining. The main revenue source for the transfer station price is C and D. So when that declines, we, the hauling costs decline, which is great, but the revenue declines and it, it's very um, difficult to deal with. So that enterprise fund 
we'll have to see if it makes it through the year. We're hopeful that we can finish up the year and make the budget projections for revenue. So CMD right now, the last time we updated you, there was an 18% increase upon the rebid. The contract was held by New England Recycling. They were bought out by Wood Waste. They have honored the price. Um, the rate increase is going to go up in July to 135. And then they mentioned, uh, already said that they want to go up to 140 in, um, at the expiration of that contract. So that's something Sean's you know, looking at right now. Household trash did go up January 1st for 3.8%. Jim, Kevin, and I and Sean met with CMAS about some changes they're looking at for their structure, and more information will be provided to you about that as it moves forward as Kevin continues <coughs> his due diligence. Sorry. Um, these are the um, capital projects that are already on the capital plan from last year. I'm sure they'll be rolling forward. As you can see, they're they, they're not excessive. This is something we would normally take through retained earnings, and that would be something we would hope to do. Depends whether or not the revenue allows us to do that. Um, again, we just tried to year over year revenue sources. Where is the money coming from? Uh, the star is on that bulky waste, and you can see it is markedly down so far this year. And you can also see that it's one of the main drivers, other than transfer station stickers and trash bags. Are they, are they going elsewhere or? As construction just we don't know if everybody was getting rid of all stuff during COVID or uh -huh. people going back to work because it's not as much going. Like we had Riley and we had COVID. So it's kind of hard. Um, that spike you see in transfer station stickers is due to the increase in prices of the sticker. Um, our hauling costs, again, since we have less CMD coming in, less going out, so it looks very good for 2023 year to date. I had a voice all day and now it just wants to go away. Um, these are just where the hauling, the, the costs are going to. And you can see that um, the main one is the uh, wood waste or New England recycling about halfway down 174,000. And then the household trash at 290. Those are the two big um, drivers in hauling costs budget. So debt is what you would expect. This enterprise fund has very little debt. It has just equipment that it's recently bought. So 2024 is the spike, and then it's going to come back down for 2025 forward. So that's very helpful in the overall picture if we do have to do some borrowing for some things on the capital plan, which we hope we don't have to do. The sticker sales, I just want to let you know what happened with the sticker sales. They're fairly on par. This is January to April for the first like, last six years, and then the full calendar year of 2022. So we're a little off, but that could just be timing issues issues with people when they bought their sticker, um, but there's still strong sales. And then overall last year, we ended up with over 7,000 stickers sold. So this is that tonnage, the very, very busy slide that I love and Sean loves that everybody else hates. <laughs> but this is month over month, year over year tonnage for the C&D. And you can see Riley, the storm Riley is hot, highlighted. Um, and you can see on the 2023 line, just how much it's down. In 2022, in February and March, that's when the scale was broken. So they couldn't bring any c &D in. So it is down markedly and it's not an isolated month. It's more of a continuous stream. Looking at local communities and what their fees are as well. Um, this has been updated since the last one and I added the town of Pembroke and I, that was what I handed to Sean. Um, their rates on scale for c &D, which I, I cannot quantify in words that will fit in a box. So I just say by load size, because it's literally like, if it's a Mini Cooper, you pay this much. If it's a bigger Mini Cooper, you pay this much. Um, but our c &D rate is relatively low. There are Duxbury's 600, um, Hingham's 320, Kingston's 480. Uh, our biggest um, competitor right now would be um, Cohasset, who's also 300. And some of these towns won't take other town C and D, but it's not as if our load, our price is so high that we're driving people away. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just something interesting to note. And if we wanted to do something with the C and D rate with the contract going up, that there is room to go and not price ourselves out of the immediate market. And the three and rather the three that have curbside service. So as I said, the fund continues to struggle to break even with the contractual requirements it has for a fuel in addition to debt service and the need for that uh, a few more pieces of um, improvements at the plant at the facility itself we've done most of the equipment increases 
sticker fees have already been increased to support that fifth person, which we'll be bringing on in July. Um, the overall decline of the CMD tonnage and the fact that the costs are increasing is not a good um, mix for us, especially for that enterprise fund where that is one of the main drivers of revenue. Um, so our recommendation to the board tonight is to review the rates after the close of the fiscal year and know is known. And once we have final new contract information on the CMAS contract and the CMD disposal contract, and then we can come back and review and see if the board wants to do anything or just adopt the CMC attitude towards this enterprise fund's current fee structure. If something should change, such as what happened with the mattresses, we would certainly come forward to the board and let you know and then make an, uh, an adjustment on the fly. Um, but that's currently where we were moving forward with the transfer station enterprise fund. Can we get that slide presentation in hard copy? I know it, it was sent to us, right? It, yeah, yes. It was somehow inadvertently left out of the packet, but I will certainly print copies for you um, and you can take them with each night if you like. Oh, that's good customer. <laughs> <laughs> Water. Water. Do you want it? Sean, do you need to go? Yeah, because probably going to. Have a good night. Okay. Okay. So um, the water rate presentation is a little more needy than normal because we have uh, a new board member. I wanted to put a little bit more explanation in it um, for everyone. So in the presentation, we're going to talk about what makes up our water rates. And this, will, when we get to sewer, we'll have already covered this so we can quickly go through those slides, um, look at our fiscal 24 budget review, the debt obligations, what's driving any potential rate increases for your consideration, what's on the capital plan, and um, future considerations, specifically additional water main replacement funds that are going to have to be on this uh, fall special town meeting, for my, in my opinion. So the water rates are comprised of two pieces, the quarterly base charge, as well as the quarterly usage charge. So the usage charge can be influenced by external factors, things beyond our control, um, including uh, weather conditions such as storms and droughts, um, water restrictions imposed internally by the, the, the board or externally by DEP or other agencies, water conservation measures, and also by user behavior. Um, the base charge is a stable revenue component that is not subject to that same volatility as the usage charge. And we'll get into more of that when we get into the sewer presentation. Um, so since it is um, variable and dependent on actual consumption, the board did adopt a fourth tier in fiscal 21 to try to um, curb usage in a water conservation measure. And you can see right now um, where those, uh, the people that are affected by those uh, different tiers. So tier one, everyone is affected by tier one. If you turn on the tap, you're gonna get a tier one usage. So those are the big numbers. Tier two, it's once you get over that um, top line of consumption over the uh, 1201 to 3000, tier three is 3000 to 5000. So you see 50% of the users are affected by tier two, only less than 10% by tier three, and then about 3% are affected by tier four. So those are the number of records that were actually billed, accounts that were billed at that uh, should be records that were billed at that rate. So keep in mind, about 8,000 users, four bills a year. That's why it looks like 32,000. So you divide that by four. You have like 200 in 2023 that were affected by the, the tier four rate. Wait, can you go back to this real quick? So, so in, go ahead. Yeah, so we have roughly a thousand more users in the last in, in three years and I've seen that divided by four. Oh, okay. And that's just the higher users, it's not new users. Yeah, so I'll try to say it's in place. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's because of the, the crappiest tea ever. Andrew, don't ever buy this tea. Right. It's terrible. Okay. Um so then I looked at it a different oh, way. Can what I just to make an observation? I mean is my observation correct that it looks like it's Happens slightly, people, you know, with adding the tier four, 
it looks like we divide everything by four, and that will actually end up from last year to this year. Or 22 to 23. Yeah. So it, so it really hasn't made a big impact. Yeah. I would say like one more year or two, we'll really have a, a sense beyond COVID, droughts, yeah. all the rest to say, okay, yeah, it, it's not affecting people's usage at all, or they, the ones that did care curb, did the rest, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna water no matter what. So, um, like I said, it's still a little bit hard to discern because you really can only see the percentages. Everyone has to be affected by tier one. Tier two, we already said at least half are affected. And then tier three, it's, you, depending on the size of your family and what you have going on at your house, you may or may not be affected in tier four. Basically, you could avoid it if you really wanted to on uh, water conservation measures. You have to have a lot of teenagers to really get into tier four and just showers. So what's the money that's coming in from these different tiers? I thought that was important to bring out to you these, um, this time. And tier four is generating $600,000 of the overall usage revenue. So if all of the people on, if we didn't have a tier four and all those people were being billed at tier three level, it would be $173,000 less. So I thought that was important for you to know what is that tier four bringing in. And also the third column, which is the differential between the different tiers. So between one and two, it goes up 336%. Between uh, two and three, it's 61%. And then we set tier four at 40% higher. So let's go over to the base rate. Base rate is based on the size of the, um, the meter connection. So these are all the different sizes of meters that are currently out there. Um, there are no four inch ones right now. And the number of services that are connected and then the revenue that is being generated by those base rate charges. Thank you so much. Becky, floral tea you can go away. <laughs> Who knew decaffeinated tea could be so bad? So a 1% increase on um, the uh, base rate generates $39,457 approximately. So again, just a different way to look at it and see where the money is coming from based on the rates. So overall, a 1% increase, $39,457 coming from the base rate, $32,279 coming from the usage rate. You should expect for $71,736, barring any um, strange and unusual external circumstances like a major drought or some type of uh, other event. So our fiscal 24 budget, lots of words. Uh, basically, it was, full, it was uh, fully funded by the rates. There is no deficit like there is in the sewer department. Those are just the pluses and minuses and all the different lines, which you're familiar with. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is the, um, again, it's in, because the chemicals took off last year and it was a 77% increase, we added this slide. This year, there's only a 27% increase, but that's still on top of last year's 77% increase. But the starred items um, are the chemicals that are basically in use by the water department. So overall, their increase is not that bad. It's only a few hundred dollars in the, based on the quantities. Um, they do have um, a $65,000 increase in their chemical line already. So they should be fine without any change for that. Um, this is the uh, long-term debt service. Unlike what we saw with the transfer station where there was that one spike with the, the piece of equipment coming on and then it falls off rapidly and you'll see the same thing or similar thing in sewer because there's been such an investment in the water system over the last 10 to 15 years, the water, the debt hasn't had time to fall off. Most of that debt because of the cost is 20 years. So we're just in the thick of it. If you look out 2042, it's basically gone. Um, and it just doesn't come down that much and we have more layering going on. So this is what's already issued and we're paying debt to principal on, uh, excuse me, principal and interest on. Um, these are the projects that are currently approved and outstanding. And you'll see Karen and Karen, um, the uh, water tank for 2,7,20, um, which was approved in 2021 is on there. There are two items which we were going to rescind at the Springtown meeting and we uh, IP the article because there was a question of whether or not we would need some money. It looks like we probably won't need any more money. So those would be back on the list for September, uh, October 2023 special town meeting to be rescinded. So that'll bring down the authorizations by two million. The water treatment plant is not on this because it's a debt exclusion and it's on the tax rates. So these are all of those projects and the debt service. 
So you can see those lines are fairly consistent as well. And if we layer it on top of the other, you see that the, the black line is that was that previous blue line, uh, blue bar that was slightly declining. And now it's not declining at all. We're just layering. And that's what's been happening for the last five to eight years. And that's why the rates have continued to go up and go up and go up because we keep investing in the system. And it has been a discussion about when, when do we need to stop and just let some of this retire out? And can we stop and let some of this retire out? So the, the retiring debt service between fiscal 24 and 25 is only $115,000. I know that sounds like a lot, but when you look at some of the prices of what the projects are, it's really not that much. Uh, the pending new debt is a million five thirty six. If all the projects were to be issued at once, which they are not going to be, and I increased all of these to a higher interest rate based on what's happening in the market. Um, water mains, we have three million. Uh, there was three point three million that was approved at the annual that we're going to be spending immediately. Um, the new water tank, depending on how fast that moves through. The Hummer Rock water main construction, that's a big ticket item, but if the project is on hold currently, so that doesn't have to be built into the rates, but it just needs to be acknowledged that it's out there. Um, so again, that's more of a holding pattern. How, how long is that on hold for? Is it because we can't get the residents to work with us on that? Oh, no, the cost of pipe has jumped up oh, so by you're 100%. Just waiting. You know, Let's see if that comes down. Seeing where it goes. Yeah, well, we talked about this one. Once we get the new water superintendent on board, um, we're going to have to meet as the water commission. But we have Dolan Well, we have the reservoir project, we have the Hummer Rock water mains. Uh, there's one that I'm missing. All things that we want to do, we, we can't do them all. So I think, you know, for me, the lowest priority is, is probably the Hummer Rock water mains. Um, but we're going to have to decide which ones we want to do. With the prices escalating, Dolan Well was was estimated at three million dollars. Now it's up to nine million dollars. Hummer Rock was at six. I'm sure it's much higher than that if they go on the bid. Uh, same with the, the reservoirs. I think it was three, Kevin, um, and that's probably five to six now. Before we do that, so those projects are all kind of on a holding pattern uh, until we get a new superintendent on board. He gets his eyes on it, comes back to the board, and says, "Here's what we have out there. Here's my recommendation going forward." Some of these we're going to have to hit the head with the shovel and then they stop and get down the short term. And just to clarify, the primary engineering and everything is still going on the raising of the reservoir. But if that hasn't stopped, we're still moving forward with getting it ready and we'll have to stop. Same with all the law. Yeah. So, to Jim's point, as you see, some of the numbers that are on the existing capital plan that's soon to be updated in a couple of months um, are outdated. So, replacing the water mains at 2.5 to 2.9 million, that's just not going to cut it anymore. And Jim already mentioned the reservoir expansion and the Dolan well was already put up, but that's still almost $30 million on a five-year plan with fiscal 24 being mostly funded already. Not including the water treatment plan. Right. Which is not funded through water rates. Yes, sorry. So okay. what, what, is the, what is the problem, shall we say, with Hummer Rock? Is it leaking? Are we- What's the percent leak rate? Yeah, we're, 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 we're we think that's a lot of our on account for a lot of our And that water we pay for for water mail, which is expensive water to be losing. It is expensive water, but it is not water coming out of our pond. No, but it's water we're paying more right. for. So, right. okay. Thank but you. but we, I, I tried to do the math on what it's going to cost to put that water main in, and how much, how much we'll save, it. and how long it's going to take for us to pay it back. Right. It's none of us are going to be anywhere. Above ground, I don't think it, by the time it pays off, it's a long way out. Gee, this is very difficult. It was like a 40, 50 year payoff. So. Okay, so, yeah. maybe Andrew. Sure. I know I will. Andrew will. Well, we just talked to Andrew will. Thanks for writing me off of that one. It was 40, 50 years of the back of It was a long time to pay off. So, the, the only other thing that I have is that we have to get the water main in County. When it gets down, start down towards the deadline, we have some of these basically shovel ready projects that we could literally go out to bid if someone would give us some money. It, it's too early for them to, you know, say, no, we got things are available. Um, so, what's our potential things that you might want to look at for increase <clears throat> putting into your rates? 
We talked about some increases in personnel costs, and some of this is due to um, increasing stipends for licensing because basically, as you've seen, we're being poached. Um, municipalities are poaching um, licensed individuals from other municipalities. It, it is the name of the game right now, and it's the only thing that other municipalities can do because the, license, the people who have licenses are so hard. It's very difficult to recruit. Um, we also have issues with project management and retention just from the number of uh, openings you have in DPW overall and what is going on in the water department currently. So looking at potentially putting another $125,000 um, dollars into their budget to address that and potentially bring on more personnel. If that's something the board wants to consider and have more discussion about, that would be about a 1.75% rate impact. The uh, different debt service for the projects are, are all there, the water tank that we just spoke about. The ones in yellow are the ones I would say you should incorporate into your rates because those projects, we're going to spend all of that money and have to issue bonds for that and start paying that back. Whereas the water tank and the Hamark water mains a little bit farther out on the um, spectrum. And like I said, we are going to need additional water main funding because we will be exhausted with our funds after this next project that Kevin has queued up that you're already aware of. So what has happened with our water rates? These are all of the increases over the past probably um, 13 years, 14 years. So they have been jumping and jumping annually. So the recommendation for you to think about currently is to increase the base and usage rates by 10%, which will generate about $717,000. The new water tank will hold off and maybe we can accommodate that debt when it comes forward by some of the retiring debt. Maybe enough of a hole will open up. If not, that will have to be uh, something that will have to be added into the rates going forward. And then as Jim and Kevin have already mentioned, to reevaluate the remaining projects in the next rate review and see what's really coming forward and what, how much further we want to go uh, once we have um, senior personnel back on staff in that, in that enterprise fund. So where does that put us overall with our neighbors? We're still three. Um, I'm happy to say Hingham has the second highest water bill. I actually brought it, it's in my pocketbook for you, Andrew, because it's all surcharges. It's just a list of surcharges. Like my, I, my actual water bill is half of the assumed usage for this, and it's probably going to be somewhere around $550 for the year. So it's, it, it's ridiculously high, and Cohasset has the highest rates. Yeah. So yes, we're high, but we're not as high as some of the other systems who have not made the investment that you can see in situ. Any marching orders for next steps? Did you say 10%? Are you saying 10% across the board? 10% base and usage. Base. Yeah. Okay. On both. On both, yeah. And which is what we normally do with water, it's base and usage. Mm -hmm. In sewer, I have a, a different spin because, you know, I have a, a thing with the sewer enterprise fund. Sorry. Well, I'm wondering if we, I mean, should we prioritize first before we? Should we actually know what that prioritization is before we move on a rate increase? Because if there are some projects that you don't want to move forward with, the next. The projects that we don't want to move forward are included in this that we're going to talk about. The reservoir construction is not in here. The Amor water main construction is not in here. The Dolan well field, uh, I don't think that's in here right now. We'll prove that, but it's not in here. <coughs> Those, those aren't in here right now. Um, and Kevin talked about, I think those uh, those stamp pipes are probably one of the highest priorities we have because we have, just like the plant, we have no redundancy. We lose a, a stamp pipe. We don't have enough water, we don't have enough water pressure. Um, but you know, we start talking about dome well versus the reservoir, it's gonna give you the biggest back from the bottom and, and because that, Six to nine million piece, we don't really have the capacity to take them both on. So those right. are some of the conversations we'll have to have. But those All projects right, so are in here right now. Like I said, we didn't expect you to take any votes tonight. Right. Questions? Are we Comments? Uh, obligated to do the 10% across the board or could further 
adjustments to be made to just one tier versus another. But you know, if you really want that to. That was my question, too. Okay. I, I can run any type of analysis you want. I like to run that first. What do you mean? Like, do you want to put like the fourth tier up 50% or 60% and see what that would do with, with same usage or? Uh, I mean, uh, 50%, but I mean, well, it's already up to 15. I more want to see options, right? Are there other options besides the cross board? Uh, we can 15 or something out there. You can widen the gap between the, the tiers. So it's 336 between first and second. It's four, uh, 61 between third, second and third, and 40 between third and fourth. I mean, we can make that 65 and 65 and see how much more that would generate. Yeah. So you want to look at a, a tier rate change? Yeah, I mean, I do think the people on fixed income are having trouble. Yeah, and we received an email today, so that's what we did. Um, so I would be curious about people making sure that the low utilizers don't feel at home. I mean, we can look at something where you don't touch base at all, and you only do um, yeah. the usage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then I have a question. I guess I have a question on this. Might be a newbie question. If you are a Summer resident, do you pay all year? You well, pay you don't have to get your water turned off. You get your water turned off, but you're still going to pay your four base rates. Okay. So I would be interested to see if there's an option where we don't touch the base rate, but touch, but do the tiers. Okay, I can do all kinds of things. Okay. <laughs> I don't think that there's an easy solution to this, but you know, unintended consequences was brought up when we when we jacked, when we added the other tier and the rates went up. If somebody, a resident brought something to my attention that I hadn't thought about, it was if you're a family of seven, and we have large families. And you're using an appropriate, you know, less than 65 gallons a day. That's the standard or whatever it is. Um, just because if you have more kids, you get jumped up to another tier. Which I don't think there's a solution, but it was something I was not mindful of. We were thinking really from the conservation net. How do we, how do we, you know, discourage overuse? And I don't, I just mention it because it, it, I think it, it's, it's valid. I mean, these aren't people that are abusing their, their water and they are because of the number of people in the household being uh, paying more. And then they turn into teenagers. And then they turn into teenagers. That's, that's a usage thing. But, you know, but generally speaking, if you have, you know, five little kids, they're not staying in the shower hours and hours, and you're throwing them all in the same bathtub anyway. In terms of teenage boys, the water usage has to go down. So. Oh, not, not, not yeah, I've heard of them in the shower. <laughs> Teenagers, generally, anyway. Anyway, well, I don't know how you it's, know, I, I mean, it's not, there's no way to really monitor it. There isn't, but I just, I bring it up because it, it's, it did not occur to me. And, you know, mm -hmm. just like we don't want to, um, you want to be really mindful of those on a fixed income. It's, it's, it's a legit thing. I don't think there's a I don't think there's a way to approach it other than some really complicated debate method. Yeah, I don't even know. How that 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 you? I know. I mean, you can't really do that, right? Yes. Or number in the house. I, I also want to work with, with three young children at home, and that's a long grade. I've ever been in first year. I think if you're responsible, if you're not watering the lawn, there's no reason you should just get more tired. Yeah, I have three there's kids. no reason. I don't care if you have seven kids. Yeah. There's no reason for any resident to get into a fourth That's tier. Unless you're filling up a swimming pool. <laughs> okay, so what we'll do is yes. look at the tiers, yeah. keep in the base rate, yeah. consistent. Uh, that would be great. Okay. Certainly can do that. Okay. So our final presentation for the evening is the sewer rates. 
Well, I'm picking this by color and that's the right color. So as I said, um, there's a similar breakdown between uh, the rate composition and the, the factors that are driving it in fiscal 24 as well. Overall, just as a spoiler alert, a 1% increase in rates is approximately $25,807. So again, sewer rates are comprised of the quarterly base rate and the usage rate. And since sewer usage is based on water usage, um, it flows, you no know, pun intended, it flows right through. So it's not um, called differently. And there is only one tier of sewer usage. And that is something that's consistent with other communities as well. So um, there's also the single quarterly base charge currently of 8270 and the consumption rate is 6.62 per 100 cubic feet. Um, based on the fiscal 23 service connections, a 1% increase on the base charge is 11,311 and on the usage part portion is 14,496. So that's the more volatile portion and that's what makes up that $25,000. So I took a look at if we only did a base increase base rate increase. And the reason why I'm a fan of the base rate increase is one, you know how much it's going to go up. As I say, your bill's going to go up $89 um, on the base rate rather than it could be whatever your usage is. Two, that can't be influenced by external factors. So the funds are going to come in no matter what. So this is the current rate is 82.70. If it went up to 5%, 10% and all the way up to 27%, that's what would happen to the quarterly rate times the number of services. You see the additional revenue that would be generated and then the consumer impact of that. So if it were, went all the way up to 27%, it would be an $89 impact to all the services, an annual impact. So the problem with the sewer um, enterprise fund is a problem that we knew when the budget was voted and it was moving through the process. It has a variance of $135,747 that needs to be raised through some type of a rate increase. Um, some of the things that were um, culled out of the um, budget are there. So the request was $529,000 in excess of projected revenue and uh, the town administrator reduced it by $394,000. And those are those reductions that are there, including the emergency reserve line was eliminated. That's how deep the cuts went, trying to get it into its revenue um, limits and we still couldn't get there. Like the uh, water, uh, Enterprise Fund, they use the same Eastern Mass Chemical Cooperative bid. As you can see, the two um, highlighted stars, the red star is there because even though it looks like methanol went down and Will was quick to point out to me that, yeah, that's great. That's just the base rate, it's tied to an index. So it's still very volatile. So that 53% is really not the case. And unlike water who only had a few hundred dollar increase, one of the major drivers for them is sodium carbonate, which is soda ash, and we use a lot of it. So overall, we're expecting the chemicals to go up $51,000 based on this latest bid. Sludge cake disposal costs, one of the other very volatile and expensive costs. This was something that used to go out to bid maybe five years ago, Will, and you'd get multiple bids. And I think the last two times it's gone up, there's only been one bidder. Um, it's, very questionable about where you can take it now. The landfills are being capped. So finding a place to take it and transportation to get it there is getting very difficult. Um, right now, the fiscal 24 budget for this is 285,000, but the contract expires at the end of December. And last time it went out, it results in a 22% increase. So that's something we're very mindful of. Um, and with only one month to go in fiscal 23, we're already at what we were in 2022. So this is the existing long-term debt for the sewer enterprise fund, which is very attractive. This is what happens when you have rapidly amortizing debt and you don't have the, the massive um, investment in infrastructure that's going on in the water enterprise. The debt falls off, you can backfill with new projects. Um, these are the projects that are sitting out there to backfill and you recognize those big I, &I projects. Those are the big drivers right now. Um, the uh, balance of the Cedar Point's um, gravity system, that was in that article that was rescinded, that will be rescinded in that next rescission um, article. It's, those funds are not needed. So these are those items that we have the existing long-term debt in blue that you just saw, which was rapidly amortizing. Those are those projects layered in. So you can see that we can make this work with a little bit of time. 
and not really hit um, the rates for the debt service in a, in a major impactful way. Um, one of the issues we have right now is the, the rise in interest rates, so that is hurting us. Uh, but that's the case with, and we had mentioned this before, when we, uh, in last year's graph, we showed the arrows showing the room that was available and that we were going to try to um, wedge these projects in. This is still on the capital plan. The sewer enterprise fund has $15 million on the capital plan. As you remember, you may remember, they had the influence green and pump project that was not recommended in fiscal 24 because we hadn't yet done the facility study and that will probably be before you in one of your July meetings for an award of contract. So sewer connection fees, um, this has been a discussion topic for the board and there are varying opinions on it. The board has not adopted a policy to allow X amount of connections to be awarded annually. So there's no guarantee that you'll get the connection fees. Um, as you can see from the data on the um, screen, what was budgeted and what we actually brought in doesn't look that bad. But in fiscal 22 and fiscal 23, it was two large lump sum payments that actually brought us over the, the finish line. In fiscal 22, if we had not received the Riverway condo fee connection, we would have missed by a long shot. Um, we would have had a deficit of 160,000. If we had not gotten the Drew company fees of 229,000 this year, we would be now talking about a $208,000 deficit with one month to go. They are highly unreliable. Um, unless there's a policy in place saying we're going to connect 15 and we're going to try to recruit those, those 15 connections other than the, the connections that are coming in from development. So total expense funding, we have a deficit of $247,000. So that would either be a 9.6% base and usage rate increase or a 22% base rate only increase. This would bring those uh, emergency reserve line back, increase chemical increases, add the short-term interest because of the Oceanside INI that project moved faster than was expected, or at least moved faster than expected from the financial area standpoint. So it has a ban and we did not budget to have um, short-term interest in fiscal 24 at all. So that needs to be funded. Um, if we wanna re start reducing our reliance on connection fees and move back to our um, usage and base, actual sewer base and usage fees to support the operational budget, an additional 48% um, shift would be 1.86% base and usage rate increase or 4.2% on the base rate only. And that would shift, um, right now, fiscal 24 requires 24 connections at 16,000. And I'm not aware of any big lumps of money that you have planning for fiscal 24. Can you talk about? Okay. Not really sure now. Okay, so we have, we're hoping that we get 24 connections. Um, and if we don't, we could have hundreds of thousand dollars of deficit. That's my personal desire to stop having this heavy reliance on connections that we're not sure we're going to get. These are the sewer rate increases that, in the, that have happened over the past and the last two years have been very sizable. And But that has been in response to the fact that we didn't raise our rates over other years because there was an increase in water and they did not want to burden people on water and sewer at the same time. So the recommendation is to keep the, the usage rate to fiscal 23 levels and only increase the base rate. That would address all of the issues that are outlined on the screen. Um, something else for consideration is our septage rates, which are currently seven and a half cents per gallon, and they could be increased to eight cents a gallon. That increase could drive away some of our volume, so we don't think it necessarily is a big revenue generator. Um, but there is concerns with the volume of septage coming in that there may be some PFAS concentrations. So that's an unknown factor. Our nearest competitor, competitor is Marshfield, who's at seven cents. So when we went to seven and a half, they stayed at seven. So we don't have any inclination that they're going up or down. The question is whether an extra half cent per gallon would drive someone away. No pun intended. So what's going on around us? So not, as you notice, I mentioned, these are the same towns that we look at for water as well. And some of them are not sewer towns, so they're marked. So we, again, if you did a 27% base rate increase, that would still keep us as number four. 
um, just behind Marshfield, who has not yet set their rates for fiscal 24. And Cohasset still is number one, and Kingston is number two. And I wanted to bring to your attention Rockland. So Rockland had a lovely little rate study done um, in May, and their rate study calls for a 10% increase every year from fiscal 24 to fiscal 31, and then 7% for 32 and 33, and then it goes down from there. So that's the, the harm of not um, addressing your infrastructure and building your rates appropriately and keeping them at a low rate. So even though they look wonderful on the screen, they're probably going to become number one in a few years and outpace some of the other people on the screen. I think we kept it under an hour and a half. What are my marching orders for sewer? Well, how, you know, I, I was always aligned with the conversation in the past years of having a, you know, a policy or plan to bring on any private citizens who do want to connect and to keep that revenue coming in. Um, but we haven't supported that. We didn't really support it because of capacity issues in the past, but as far as capacity right now with all the I and I work, it's my understanding when we talked about that previously, that the impact of bringing private residences on who need to or want to um, wasn't really a significant impact on our capacity. Is that a fair statement? Right. Um, One-offs, two-offs, things like that. Right. No, it's, it's relatively insignificant. Yeah. In, in the future, um, hopefully within the next month, we will be doing an update with the INI contract. The engineering firm will have them in. That to be environmental partners and go over the results and what they've done so far the study and what we've completed. So to understand where we are. Yeah, to understand where we are. What we have for reflections. Mm -hmm. um, they're not actually under contract to design or do anything with the situation. No, give us an idea. Give us an idea of hopefully where we are, what we're saving. Um, we have discovered a couple of things. There were some pictures outside on some particular streets that are really bad. Um, <laughs> Agent Beach Road. <laughs> um, do we have an idea what that, that did you say it was 16 connections a year to 24? Did I see that on there? How many? 24. 24 a year to encourage. That's what we have budget for. That's the budget. Okay. We don't have a level budget. These are infiltration. Could you? Um, I didn't see in the capital plan projections any um, anticipated funding to uh, bring North Central, whatever the solution is, North Central online, whether it's the design. Piece, if we're going to bring it back or whatever, there, I, why is that not? Or did I miss it? Why it was that? on, it was taken off, it's called back on. Okay, and order of magnitude for? It was $12 million in 2023. That's for the regional, or is that for? That's the North Situate. Okay, so regardless of. That's all the laterals, and I don't want to oversimplify it, but. Going to go has to come back to us is how you kind of tilt the system, right? Which okay. way which way you want it to run. That's oversimplifying it, but that's okay. I, I can handle that. <laughs> um and, and, and we'll we'll that. Like, that's really awesome. <laughs> uh, um, I don't want you know us to be two years from now saying, oh, we don't have room in our rates to address that because and a lot of that is also um better than peace. Is what these better than these? Yeah. Oh, right. Thank you. Susan? Mm -hmm. So I wanted to know if there was possible to have a proactive plan on how to get to 24, since that's our number for the budget. Well, look, that's what I'm saying. Besides, so the, I mean, I'm hoping, I mean, how do I help so good? I am. <laughs> Oh, it's not a good strategy. Not a good management strategy. So we don't advertise, you know, it's not advertised yeah. or anything like that. Like we have 24 connections, but 
basically we have a standard operating procedure of when people can tie in. Um, they can tie in by right if they have sewer in front of their house and they don't have sewer. Um, and then there's also, they can apply to the board, to come to the board if it's a hardship and they don't have sewer in front of their house, they're gonna extend or something to that effect. It goes to the board of health and then it comes to the board for approval. So it's not like, you know, we're out looking expansion wise, how to, like we're gonna do this neighborhood or these 10 houses, it's, it's more on a needs basis. If somebody's septic's failing and they're close enough to sewer that they could get over. Is there a way to do it by a lottery? Like if and now something that we, I, you know, I'm just being nervous because I'm nervous like that. I, I don't know with the DP if we could we could advertise that to 24. Uh, it becomes uh, onerous to do the, the spaghetti lines. They're, they're difficult to maintain. Uh, the replacement kind of gets a little odd and funky to deal with. Uh, ways to promote few, you know, more connections like that. Uh, most of the existing, if you will, butt gravity sewer, you have probably likely already been assessed a betterment. So if you, there's not a connection mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're the same use. But if you have a change in use, so if you have policies that promote subdivision of lots, construction of accessory dwellings, or increase of you know, density bonus for a parcel, uh, those types of projects would incur sewer connection fees, would, would bring that revenue. But, that's a that's a larger discussion with the planning board with the building department about you know which area of towns you can actually plan and zone for that. Um, it's worth it's a little challenge, a little tricky. And then how do you know which ones are failing besides the test when they when so if somebody house, hires if an someone in, buys a house somebody, you obviously know. So if they buy a house, they have an inspector right. beforehand that says it's in failure. So um, Obviously, one of the standards are if there's water outcropping on the road um, from if the septic's out front, um, if they have a septic inspection, if it's failing, they might have backup into the house. Um, you know, there's all sorts of different ways. And then it's assessed and failure after they have an engineer come out and evaluate the whole system. And then that engineer then produces something and goes to the board of health and explains what's going on. Okay, so it could be like a complaint or something. Um, other ways to generate revenue from those connection fees might be to consider an increase in the connection fee itself. Um, it's very difficult how other towns calculate connection fees, um, but I, I believe ours are relatively low by comparison. Uh, a lot of communities do it by like a, by bedroom counts or, or things of that matter, so it makes it a little tricky to calculate. but. Uh, and then that's another consideration is there could be a surcharge for adding bedrooms to an existing property. Uh, there seems to be a lot of construction in town, but if you, you know, are pre-existing connected to sewer and you add, you know, two bedrooms, five bedrooms, whatever it may be, there's no related fee for that as far as sewer goes. There are, there are other permits and fees to worry about, but not on the sewer. Yeah. That's, a good point. that's interesting. No. Oh, I just want other options besides continually increasing the rate. Like more, that's a great option. A little, yeah. little more finesse. I'm just, I, I guess I'm just surprised that we're not kind of piggybacking on what you said about kind of the, air, the areas where we're thinking. I mean, that we all know that North Central is a priority, so why aren't we inching towards that for those folks that maybe aren't to get those benefits and make sure that we're getting closer and closer? So we're there. What do you overall, I mean, I, I'm getting increasingly nervous just about the system writ large, the amount of rainwater itself that we're treating, chemical costs, right? I mean, it's every five gallons we treat, only one of it's from a user, four of it's from rain. Like it just, we're, we're treating things. We're really didactic. Yeah. I mean, about any other, I mean, I know this is probably when all the other uh, evaluations and things are happening, but it just seems absolutely asinine to be treating rainwater and spending half a million dollars talking about that so we can, uh, it's, it's painful on people's pocketbooks, and I don't know what other solutions there may not be. Um, it's just a difficult tool to swallow. We hard ramped up uh, sewer inspection. So now at the time of sale, uh, 
properties that have older sewer lines, so it's made out of clay, cast iron, materials that are known to be in stages of failure given when they were installed, uh, or just by the nature of their material, develop cracks or root infiltration, leaks for groundwater and rainwater. Those are now required to undergo inspection. So we're able to, as property sell and transfer bit by bit, address these as, as we discover them. Um, you know, it's, it's something, but you know, these larger INI projects are much more significant in actually addressing and removing and restoring capacity um, in much larger chunks. But at least over time now, we have a program where we're gonna be able to keep up with things. So we won't slip back to where we, our trends used to be. Right, but you're exactly right. I mean, you look at that picture, um, and we're linking with the SIV in that area. Fixing that up is going to be a, a pretty significant savings, and that's something we're judging. Do we do we give it to the contractor as a change order and get it fixed right away, or do we design it, go up to bid on it? It's about three hundred foot of pipe that's leaking like that. But you know, we're we're going we're going after everything aggressively. Is this rainwater or water? It's groundwater. Brown it water. could be ocean. It could be you know. It, I think that pipe. Is about 14 feet deep. So it's and also the Oceanside Seawall Project is supposed to help keep the water from going over the seawall down to our pump station. Mm -hmm. Because during storms, remember, we can get very easily an extra 10 million gallons of flow in, in days, you know, that, that we're picking up because all that drainage of that basin area basically comes from the pump station. Yeah, remind me when that started. It's supposed to be starting soon, but um, the alphabet soup of state regulatory, I won't use the word, is uh, rearing its ugly head. And uh, now, oh. now we have agencies yeah. pointing and saying, well, you have to do this. And then the other agency says, well, if you do that, you can't do this. And, mm -hmm. um, so uh, it's by not getting away. Certainly going on to bed already. Well, yeah, I guess my only question is um, any of the new development that's coming into town or potentially coming in seems to be in the West End at this point where there's no sewer. So, I mean, we've got that working against us. So, my question would be are there 24 identifiable homes? And it seems like people are squeezing in three house lots into what you would have thought was one. Um, so I, I guess we identified any of those like smaller pockets. So I can think of I can think of three residents that have come in recently that are going to be coming before you sometime in the very near future, asking if they can do a tie-in. Um, they asked what the process was. They had septics that they thought were failing at this time, and they're in the told them they would. So they'll be coming before the board. They couldn't be quantified in the current standards. They're not on the main, but they're like two houses over. I was just going to ask that question because I know we had a little go around about um, Ann Vinyl Road and Bittersweet Drive. And are there more of those potentially around these streets that are off of uh, places where there are sewer mains? Well, we'll, we'll we watch for it, but I mean, the, the residents also have to be willing to pay that fee and come in and the town sewer, you know. You gotta figure well, two we won't know unless they ask them. And I know Bittersweet was against it, but they were against it for different reasons. Because we did have the the people from I always get the name wrong. It's the, the development across the street from Wapatech School. They came in because they had been promised they were gonna get sewer and then something happened and it didn't, and then they came back in. I can't remember the name of that um anyway. Persimmon. Persimmon, thank you. Um, if there were more of those opportunities, and we talked about the tree streets forever, and you know, there's a lot of houses in there. Um, but again, it's to your point, it's the whole capacity thing. Well, every every house that we add is, you know, obviously adding more volume granted. It's right. Minimalistic, but it, it could make a difference so in what the future. So what we're saying here is we could potentially add 24 houses a year, however we find them. But we really shouldn't go more than that. I, I don't, I just don't know how to, the whole issue of the capacity. If you, if you keep increasing the number of hookups, 
because you know you have some big progress projects going on. The next year you have a deficit because you're not going to get those. Depending on the timing, you have seven new driftway, which the planning board I think has has fully permitted the old medical center. Yeah, um, it's in zoning too. Yeah, I think that might be almost ready to go. Yeah. Um, you have John Sullivan's property at the end of I think fourth place. So at least for this year, we're probably going to capture what we need. Yeah, I don't think the um, uh, Tedeschi one, the animal uh, the shelter. By the corner there next to John, that's not anywhere close to being yeah, uh, done, so I wouldn't count that. But seven new driftway could be in next year, uh, as well as maybe you know, John Solomon's property, maybe. Um, so, those are a couple of larger ones that you get those connection pieces. Right. Yeah, so those are really the last big ones, with the exception of the desk yeah, that I think is pending. Yeah, and that 40B was. Septic, yeah, the, the 40B uh, on 3A. Yeah, yeah. yeah. anything west of 3A. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then uh, bottle farm is septic. Yeah. Uh -huh. so. Well, I think we've, I mean, yeah. I think we do need a policy to try to get to that 24 every year if that's the number that, if that's the magic number to level set. Is that just the magic number to level set this year? Oh, it's just the magic number to level set that the little body could get and we wouldn't have to clear on rates. It's the one I go mm, every year because that's two years in a row we've been in May yeah, and I've been having heart palpitations because we're hundreds of thousands of dollars right. short. Right. Hence the decap C and the what. And that's we're roughly 24. 24 is about 5,300 gallons per day added to the system without any leaks. That's just straight separate with the typical, you know, four people in the house. Does anybody have any other thoughts as far as? Well, we're we such a hangs over this entire discussion, doesn't it? Absolutely. And you know, we, we we will learn a lot when we have the engineering here, and he's talking about the success in the I and I, and we we really feel we don't do also. Um, when you need this, um, we have to um, vote it within the next two meetings. Okay. At minimum, we have to address the deficit. That we have in that budget. How are we going We're just being addressed through the recommendation that you have in front of us. Yes, but there are other things in that recommendation, so we can peel those away. But we'll, I'll do the, um, Will and I will get together about the additional fees. There was just only so much I could put in the presentation. Yeah. Um, and then we'll come back to that at the next meeting. Okay. Is there anything else you guys want to see Nancy do? Or? Yeah. They do a mad two step, but I don't think that's going to help. Mm -hmm. All right, well, any options on this discussion? Basis. Well, thank you for all the due diligence and the information. Um, everybody should have it in their email now. So we'll thank you. Uh, take it upon for the discussion of the next meeting. Um, thanks, Will. Thank you. Thanks, <coughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. Yeah. Hey. Regarding the next topic, we did get some late calls today and a couple of late emails that I printed out for each of you. I saw a couple of emails. Oh, I yeah. All right. So, Nancy, is this. Uh, Taking this one, I am. Okay. And I would say you do have representatives from the time before here. I thought so. I was wondering who those entities were, but I just wanted to hang out. Thank you for joining. Those past shows that time. I do apologize to the board um, for the late emails. I think that's what I do apologize to the board. As you know from the dates on the packet, this was just received and the vote has to occur in June. So if we had to tack it on to the end of this meeting at the last minute, in case the board wants to discuss it further at their next meeting. Um, so the, you have before you the Plymouth County Retirement Board's request for the board to accept chapter 269 of the Acts of 2002, which was passed back in November of 2022, and it's retroactive to July of 2022. The, county, the retirement board is asking that the municipalities, um, all of the municipalities within the system, 
have a vote of the select board and it requires a two thirds vote of all of those municipalities for this measure to move forward. And the retirement board has already voted in favor of it. The county of Plymouth has already voted in favor of it. Um, what was not provided in the letter originally was the cost impact. We requested it and received it. Um, since then, another communication has gone out with the cost impact attached to it. Um, the cost impact is not small. So the fiscal 25 uh, actuarial estimate for the impact to our assessment is an increase of almost $170,000. Overall, our liability is going to go up $806,000, and we have to pay that off over a five-year period to meet the amortization schedule. So what does that mean to you for numbers? In our financial forecast for fiscal 25, the one that's currently adopted, we have a new growth figure of $800,000. The increase that we already were informed by the system for fiscal 25 added to this potential increase would be 763,000. So basically, if the board sees fit to approve this at this meeting or the next meeting, you will basically wipe out the new growth in the fiscal 25 projection and you will have no new growth to our towards the budgets. So, um, I know the board wants to take uh, have discussion themselves and take comments from the interested parties that are here today. I just wanted you to understand the fiscal impact of a positive vote on this particular measure, um, and also the fact that this came forward at the last minute. I mean, this is not giving you a lot of time to have discussion or reach back to the board and ask why that they uh, took the vote that they took and why they are willing to increase their liability this time and. There was no discussion of any measures that they were going to take to help smooth it over with the communities involved. So extend the conversation schedule or anything like that so that they would be able to accommodate this a little bit more readily. As you saw from the list, some communities are not affected as severely as situate. Mm -hmm. um, we're in the top three of those affected of the 59 units listed. Is that because we have the most retirees? Yeah, it's sort of just the big of the cost of our, our liability. Our liability is high. And this would also um, uh, decrease the, the uh, funded position of the, the uh, system itself. Can I say that again? They would decrease the funded position of the system, which they will recover within the five years. Uh, we're just adding, there is a liability that's being added. I can move to the side if you want to, or stay here, or whatever you want. <laughs> Um, and just so um, in COLA terms, we have budgeted in our budget right now a 3% COLA increase in the request is to put up to five. Did I read that properly? It's not what we budgeted. We receive an assessment. Okay. So this isn't going to affect the current fiscal 23 or fiscal 24 assessment. This would be one year out, the year that we're going to be starting to budget for in a few months. So we wouldn't have to make any changes at special town meeting if the board saw fit to approve this local option. Mm -hmm. But there will be a financial impact for fiscal 25 and fiscal 29. But I thought you, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I thought you said that approval would be retroactive. The, the retirees would receive the increase retroactively to July 1st, and their base would be increased, but the assessment passed along to the communities would not be felt until fiscal 25. How's that work? It's the retirement system. Have, they have enough assets okay. and they've already informed us of what our assessment is and everyone's already set their budget. Okay. So the smoothing out has been explained. They're, they're extending it out further. We're talking about $170,000, right? It didn't extend the-, the Right, it's but still it's still it's not, right. So right, 170,000. Um, there's an understanding this was passed by the legislature, correct? It's a local option acceptance, yes. Right, so the legislature passed. So it was trying to understand everything. Um, assessment was three, two, we're talking 2%, 170,000. Earlier tonight, we gave, we gave a $346,000 contract to a project we may not do. We talked about a $2 million tennis court. We talked about we raising water rates by 10%. We talked about raising sewer rates by 27%. And we're this concerned about a 2% increase to retirees that I doubt may 
bring in thirty thousand dollars a year on average. I know. I don't think it's fair to assess Nancy with um, that concern, honestly. I think her concern may be more the notification and the planning of it. I don't, I don't, I don't think that's a fair assessment. I was, I was getting the sense. I don't disagree with you that two, you know, retirees deserve an increase, especially with the cost of Healthcare increases that are there that don't always get accounted for as well. But I think let's, you know, maybe we can hear a little bit about um, from a couple of the members from Plymouth County, if you would, maybe even explain to us if there are any other measures that are being taken at the county level as well to help assess enough, you know, impact the assessments to us. So, uh, one, okay. I can have a hot seat real quick. Thank you. My name is Joe McCoy. I'm one of the two elected members of the retirement board. I've served there for the last 36 years. This is John Schiaro. He's the other elected member, also lives in the situation. Patrick Lyon is our new executive director. And Charles Jones from the Hedy. Is uh, it's often we can volunteer for something like the women's party for us. Okay, I think who's been alive would be the most uh, logical one to start. The um, <clears throat> in terms so of the time, ask for their names and titles. Okay, okay. if you could just pass that. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, Park Lyon, I'm the new executive director of the Plymouth County Retirement Board, as um, Joe had stated. Uh, I apologize for the short time frame that we gave for this uh, consideration of the COLA increase. The um, by way of reason, um, when the board was set to vote on this issue, there was a medical emergency, literally a medical emergency in the board meeting, uh, in which someone basically had no pulse after having a, a medical emergency. And actually, uh, Mr. McDonough and Mr. Ciara uh, leapt to rescue that person, giving them CPR, brought them back. Um, and that, of course, ended the board meeting right then and there. Um, basically, the executive director was out of commission for a few months and eventually did not return to Plymouth County. Um, the search then happened, which ended up myself being hired uh, May 1st and in the meantime the um, the board had voted for this increase the two percent increase one time increase in the county committee had voted to the county commissioners as noted um, by Ms. Holt to vote on that as well which takes time so I do apologize for that I get it out as fast as I could uh, considering all the circumstances it's, it's pretty straightforward the numbers that you were given um, so pretty much tell the whole story. I'm not sure if there's any questions on those numbers or the numbers that you have in front of you. If you have the full estimate breakdown, like a spreadsheet of all the units and what it's going to cost them for the um, increase. So what we're looking at is um, total estimates by by town, correct? Yes. Appropriation for fiscal year 25, and then the impact. Okay. So, Nancy, your concern is that this $800,000 just eats up our entire new growth projection for FY25, but we still put two years out, right? Oh, okay. yeah. yeah, without barring there being some type of action that, that the, the honorable members here could tell you about that 
maybe extending the amortization table by a year or two that would smooth that out a little bit. I just, from my perspective, I'm only interested in situating the impact on the situate taxpayers and that you have, we'll have a budget in fiscal 25 where it's potentially based on the current forecast, you will have no new growth. It will all be enough for this one and this passed in November. We have the notice May 31st. We had how many meetings this November with a financial forecast? Four or five? Would that have changed some of our decisions? Possibly. Possibly we look forward. So it's not about the coal, Andrew. We're just trying to make sure you understand what the cost is, what the impact is. And again, we got an explanation why it was late, but it was six months. And now it's here you go, you have 30 days to make a decision. I don't okay, that's, listen, that happens all the time. I mean, I can't tell you how many things after three years on this board I'm still waiting for. So we're talking six months, 170,000. By the way, I think we still are expecting what, a $3 million surplus probably at the end, it'll go to capital at the end. Those, uh, what, do you, what do you think we're going to probably end up going Free over? cash? Million, two million, three? I was thinking two or three million. Yeah. I think it'll be as high as it's been. My, my concern is with the <laughs> residents, not with the line item. Okay, that's where my, I, and I appreciate that. I totally understand that you care about situates, line item. I care about the 80 year old, we can't pay our water bill. That's my concern. And I understand that. I just get really nervous every time I go into a village market and I see the price of everything, and I don't want to not be able to afford it. But the intimate that we don't care about that is not. No, I'm not, I'm not saying anyone doesn't care. We're just trying to make sure that you lines. understand what the impact is. Right. That's all. Yep. The financial impact. Okay. This is what the impact on the town budget is going to be. Right. That's so all. So are so are there any options with regards to? Amortizing it differently to provide us with some relief. I think that's what we're hearing. Yeah, amortization is on the whole uh, on the liability should go away in uh, 2029. That this is included in that. So in 2029, the unfunded liability will no longer exist. If you pay for your current employees. So I'm going to give you a little bit of history on the legislation passed by the Senate and the House and referred to uh, the county. We did, in fact, uh, go on as soon as we could. We did, uh, Mr. Patrick, uh, Mr. Leiden said we did have some issues and medical emergencies, and we had a, a vacancy in our uh, fifth member of the treasurer until she was appointed. And they just point out that Citro has three of the five members on the retirement board from Citro or works for Citro. The legislation allowed us uh, some time to do that. We unanimously voted in it. I mean, county commissioners had it next by statute. They unanimously voted it. And then it comes between the board and selectmen. We have to get two thirds of the boards. We were out there trying to explain what we've got and explain any folks uh, concerned about the notice. I totally can understand that. But there were extenuating circumstances. I think the sheet that you all have there shows exactly what the cost is for the town of Situate and the unfunded liability for uh, Dr. Cola. And it shows uh, that that would be paid up over five years. And then, as I said, it took us a long time. It's been 36 years on the board. And we've uh, went from 200 million to 1.2 billion asset. Um, so we take our job very seriously. And we have the uh, total uh, 2%, uh, $320 a year, it's $26 a month. It's not much money on that end. And I understand your concerns about the budget, the town budget. But again, I ask that you adopt this and it gives our retirees. And the other thing, it's only in the first 16,000. It doesn't go on somebody's total pension. If you're making $30,000, 3% only goes in the first 16,000, regardless of how much you're making. So the tax is lower and more than anybody else. Did you have a question? Uh, just two questions. One is so, you know, 
Yes, thank you for, I mean, we've been talking about the unfunded liability and just being annoyed with it and setting the goal and to know that in 2029, good, that's great, but those projections were not anticipating increases, additional increases on, 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 on the COLA and on what the people who make, they're, you know, receiving. So, um, I'm, with Nancy, I'm, I'm a little confused about if the increase is approved, we haven't adjusted the uh, reduction. Um, it, it's, it's, no, um, there's someone knocking at the door. Oh, someone knocking. Oh. And I'm assuming they want to speak about the side. No, I think it's the we bought a lock this up. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, there's somebody's walking out the door. Okay. Someone was watching. They rushed down here. That was a question. Um, so the unfunded liability increase. The unfunded liability increase of 806,000. And you're saying that'll wipe out our free cash, but it's not. I'm not, I'm not getting the honest one. So it, it's an obligation, it's a, um, an obligation of the town. We're not actually funding that, that difference. Is that it, correct? It's an increase to our liability that we are going to have to fund over the next five years, 24 through 29. It's not years. wiping out our free cash. The fiscal 25 assessment with this additional amount based on the current estimates that's in our forecast negates our new growth. So all the additional for the 2025 for 2025s. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Okay, now I get it. Sorry, too many freeze in there, new growth. So we talked about the budget, the right. estimated pension increase when we started the budget was gonna be at 14%. Yeah, it was really high. It was really high, and the next year it was going to drop to two or three. So the, the county adopted, the board adopted a stool, and we spread that over two years. Okay, so next year we have a, a larger increase than we were projecting from before, and now this is going to be on top of it. And that one, yeah. And that's how you get to that now. Because instead of 14 and two, um, those were round numbers, I think eight and eight. Yeah. And yeah, to your point, it, it's deeply unfortunate that it's not built into our financial forecasting, but the impact we will have a chance to do for the fiscal 25 if we will be able to incorporate into our financial forecasting. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be in your financial forecast, but okay. it just means that it, right now we looked ahead to 25 and said this is what the numbers are going to look like. And, that's and now when we get to 25, it's going to be these are what the numbers. Okay. And we have historically exceeded our new growth number because Nancy's really good at being conservative. And the members of the financial forecast committee are good at being conservative in their recommendations, but also we have massive growth. And that growth is tapering off. So this is the director of assessing's best estimate of a number he knows we can achieve. If more Developments come forward. Yeah, we're based on what we've done previously, but we'll, we'll okay. easily reach that. that. Yeah. Joe Butters is done, Stockbridge Road is done, yeah. no, Seaside no, no. is done, and most of the for two companies. So the other question I had is how many towns have you gone to so far and where are you on your vote count? I've gone to uh Lake and they they passed it unanimously. To where I'm saying Lake 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 they passed it unanimously. And Pembroke passed it unanimously. That's it. Yeah, the third. You know, actually, yeah, the other, the only other town I went to was Halifax tonight, um, and they they did not have the figures that we get to you today, so we tabled it till the twenty seventh because they didn't have the paperwork you have. Um, Wareham also voted on it tonight. I don't have their their um, response yet, but um, I'm talking to the town administrator and such. They they didn't see a problem with giving the two percent. And uh, just basically uh, to let you know who I am, my name is Charles Armanetti. I am a Middleborough retirees group uh, chairman, handles the Middleborough area. But um, I found that uh, I had talked to my local um, selectmen uh, about a month ago, and they had no idea that this even passed legislation. 
So I immediately got in touch with Plymouth County and said, what's going on? And I found out what the problem was. Plymouth County had passed it on April 13th, I think it was 14th, 13th of April. And uh, that's when the medical emergency happened. So that they didn't get the letter out until the 31st of April. In general, well, it was every, every time. So you're trying to get to all 30 between now and June? I am. We're not, we're split it up. Yeah. So there was one time I heard from Tay that they don't think they're going to be able to vote on it. Because they don't have any meetings. And right. what do you need, two thirds? I need 16 towns, basically. Um, and it's a $320 increase for us retirees. Uh, and that's it, one time shot you get for, for the last year. I mean, in my opinion, if the, if the impact is, I understand the frustrations. But if the impact is only um, $169,000, we have time with our forecasting to adjust. We're, we're, we're at the beginning of it. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, what's that? So, one moment, sir. So, that's, I mean, I, that was what my question was. All right. It seems like we have enough time to plan. Susan, did you have anything? Thoughts? Um, I just have one question actually. Some of there's two lines, situate and situate housing. Some towns have two lines. Situate housing is a different entity. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. different. So it's, it's a separate entity from the town of Situate. It's we don't a separate that. entity that has to vote this too. No. No. Okay. Just the town. It's only the voting, voting um, the elected officials. <laughs> so it would be only the town actually selected. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. Gotcha. There's okay. it's 23 of them total. I think the house is. Yeah, I noticed some had housing, some didn't. I was just kind of just more mm -hmm. of a process mm -hmm. question. But um, <coughs> regarding the vote, I mean, I don't know how you don't vote for it. So that's my <laughs> I, I, it's, it's a tough situation and it's um, the timing is unfortunate. But so one thing I wanted to just to maybe yeah. I'll clarify a little bit is I, I did my own numbers, but I only accrued it for, the, for each year. Mm -hmm. And when. Uh, uh, the, from the county, I met with them tonight. They had the numbers, but I think their number incorporates the whole life expectancy of the retiree once the call comes in. How much it's going to be? It's going to be at three hundred twenty dollars. You know, it's going to carry forward with their whole as it goes. But the thing is that, and then you could expect it to pay that whole thing in the next five years. So that's why your number is, is yeah. higher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I just basically want to get away from the numbers. What I'm trying to present is, is a fair fairness doctrine. I I think this is real simple. Social Security gave the extra two percent. Whoever made this on Social Security, naturally the federal government just does whatever you know raises, appropriates the money, and does it. We're trying to get a similar piece for the retired raise in Plymouth County, situate being one, and so forth. And it's, the same two percent. That, that's where it was drawn up, and that's where it came from, and the whole thought process behind it. The avenue to adopt it's completely different, but that's where it's from. All it is is your neighbor who's in Social Security is getting the two percent. Public employee in the town of Sedgwick is that the one? Actually, up to actually, you? actually, that's 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 even too too conservative. Social Security gave five point right. five point nine percent. The year before last, and they gave 8.7 percent last year, and that was of the total you get, not and, and, 16,000. And the zero. retirees in this yeah, plan so don't have access to that. Yeah, no. so you know, if we do have Social Security, it's only because we worked 20 years prior, yeah. and then even that's controlled by WEP, which means you only get one third. Yeah, yeah everybody, everybody that worked in public service before 1987. Was more, not mandated to pay into Social Security. Mm -hmm. Now there's a nine plus two. We have different rates to pay in, but that's when the mandate started. Mm -hmm. I was on, Joe was on, and fairly safe. Joe and I were both firefighters that we were on before then. We weren't mandated. So, like he was saying, we didn't have the 20 years prior to that. We wouldn't get Social Security. So, there's a lot. So, it's now coming around where future generations. You won't be here because they will automatically have Social Security. It's the people that went before these people uh, and that uh, and, and asking for the two percent. The, the big yeah. thing also to understand is that this legislature passed this and gave it immediately to the state workers, 
and to the teachers. Mm -hmm. So any of your teachers that are local, that are retired, have already got the 5%. The only ones you're dealing with here are the police officers, the firefighters, the DPW workers, and maybe a few school workers that, you know, just not teachers. Right. Well, it just sounds like there was an unfortunate situation that mm -hmm. hampered your ability to communicate. So I think we need to take that into consideration. Um, if, I mean, I think we can work through the forecast for, for the amount, that's my personal opinion. Um, so is there any further discussion that the board needs to have to vote on this? And, and I would be very clear that I do not think our administration is insensitive and does not want to help the retirees. I think it's more about um, notification and plan. Okay, so I just want to make that clear. Um, so um, if this board is ready to make a vote and any further discussion, just have clarify. Sure. So Nancy, when you say this would wipe out our growth, 2025. You're not suggesting that we're going to have to send a check for $800,000 to the Plymouth County. <laughs> okay. No. All right. Oh, well, yeah, it, it, there, was two, there were two $800,000. Yeah. It was a lot of $800,000. So I was just trying to figure out. And whatever the board decides, yeah. we'll deal with it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll take the check. I'm not signing it, so good hire. Um, no. Do I have a motion? This one um, should be one in your packet. You just, whoever reads it, you just need to choose one way or the other. Yeah. Right. Uh, I'm it's on page uh, 82. 82, guys. Yeah. I'll read it. I'll make a motion. Oh, to, do you have it? Right. Move to accept. Move to accept the local option of Chapter Two Sixty Nine of the Act of uh, Two Thousand Twenty Two, one-time increase to cost of living adjustment for retirees in fiscal year Two Thousand Twenty Three. Moved by Mr. Goodrich. Do I have a second? Second, second by Ms. Harrison. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Coming in so late. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. For the clarification, this motion says for fiscal year 2023, but it's retroactive. Should this motion say fiscal, or is it because of the, the retirees will get the increase retroactively? Okay. Yeah. Right. Make sure the motion is correct. 23, yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you for that. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Oh, wait. Bye, Nick, all right. Next, we have a number of one day walk in all licenses to go through. Would you like one question? Um, I think that would be fine. Um, I don't think it doesn't look that okay, right? Yep, that's fine. One motion is fine. Okay. Um, we have a, a bulk of these are as well as it would be for. Four of them are uh, the ladies fish markets doing a bunch of events, which we talked about in the past, and the others. Yeah, we have some clarification on that too. So they don't, they don't, yeah, they don't need to um, change their views. Okay, yeah, good. And then the rest are our standard uh, facilities. So backup was provided, and I would move to approve the one day one and license to the ladies fish market for a private event at the fish market on Friday. June 16, 2023, from 7 to 11 p.m., and to approve a one day walk wine and malt license from the Lenny's Fish Market for a private event at their location on Friday, June. Oh, they're both Friday, June 17th and 16th. 1 16, 1 17. It was Friday, 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 Saturday, June 17th. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay, Saturday, yes, yeah, so Saturday, June 17th, 2023, from 7 to 11 p.m. Move to approve a one day one and malt license for Mulaney's Fish Market, a private event at their facility on Friday, June 24th. That should be Saturday. 
Yes, Saturday. It's either Saturday, Saturday or Friday. It's either Friday the 23rd, I know for good reason, or it's Saturday the 24th. Is it the first thing? Is it Saturday the 24th? Yes, Saturday. Okay, the dates are correct, but the days are wrong. Let's just okay, read so the Saturday, dates. Saturday, June 24th, 2023. Just read the date from 7 yeah, to 11 p.m. Move to approve a one day wine and malt license to pork in the road catering for a private event at the Situate Art Community Building on uh, Saturday, June 24th from 2 to 6 p.m. And move to approve a one day wine and malt license to Crest Catering for a private event at the Maritime Center on Friday, the 23rd from 6.30 to 10.30 p.m. and move to approve a one-day wine and malt uh, uh, to the family for us catering for private event also at the Maritime Center on Saturday the 24th from 6.30 to 10.30 and move to approve a one-day wine and malt to Knights of Columbus for a private um, private event at St. Mary's Parish Center on Sunday, June 25th from 12 to 3 p.m. And finally, uh, move to approve a one-month day wine and malt license to Alan McKenzie catering for a private event at the Citrus Maritime Center on Saturday, June 17th um, from 10 to 2 p.m., 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Motion by Mrs. Canfield. Second. Yes. Second by Mrs. Connolly. All in favor? Uh, okay, next we have our annual uh, municipal employee disclosures. Basically, this is uh, just a vote that we need to take um, in order to allow some of our public employees to partake in summer employment in other departments. So I would imagine we have many of them. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can probably, is it okay, Lorraine, if we say as listed? Yes, in the back? Yeah. Okay. Um, does someone want to read the motion? Move that the board, the select board, as required by Massachusetts General Law Chapter 268A, have reviewed the disclosure forms from the following municipal employees who seek to provide personal services to situate recreation. The exemptions under section, section 20B is approved for the, for, the, for the municipal employees as listed. Second. Move by Ms. Connolly, second by Mrs. Canfield. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, okay. Did we want to do the so the point board. election workers? Do that. Yeah, do those as listed as well. Yep. Okay. Um, move to appoint the election workers from the approved list submitted by the Democratic, Democrat, and Republican town committee chairs. Second. Move by Mrs. Campbell. Second by Mrs. Connolly. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And then we have board and committee appointments. Let's do the first one, if you guys don't mind, which is uh, just to appoint uh, following individuals for one year. Uh, these are our annual appointments. Uh, we do not need to be uh, present uh, for renewals. <coughs> um, move to appoint the following individuals for a term of one year until a successor is named. For the following department okay, that as listed, do we need to do each one? Lorraine, that's fine. Okay. Um, as listed. And then you have another one down the bottom for three years. And, and move to appoint the following individuals for three years or until a successor is named, and that would be the esteemed finance director, Nancy Holt. Second. Move by Mrs. Campbell, second by Mrs. Conley. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Sorry, point of information on this one. Nancy is appointed for one year above and three years below. Yeah, that was a mistake. Cross, okay, so I'm crossing off the one. So it's three years. Sorry, three it three was years. supposed to be three years. Okay, okay. great. Thank you. For the yeah, that's right. Um, we had one gentleman come in for the um, Affordable Housing Trust. Um, one opening. Um, are we comfortable appointing this evening? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, do I have a motion? Move to appoint. James Duck to the Affordable Housing Trust for a term of two years or until a successor is named. Second. Move by Ms. Colley, second by Ms. Canfield. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, then we have um, Mr. Fleming come in for the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, do I have any comments, discussion, votes, motions? 
seemed to be supremely qualified yes. for that position. Okay, move to appoint James Dunn. Oh, sorry. Move to appoint Gregory Dunn as first alternate to the zoning board of appeals. Move by Mrs. Conley. Second by Mrs. Canfield. All in favor? Aye. Um, you might be able to make this meeting. What should we, um, <laughs> Mr. Miller did not come in. Do no. we want to wait and see, give him an opportunity to come in, or do we want to appoint? That would be up to the board. Did you get a, any and we have two great candidates. We have two great candidates that oh. are both um, recommended by Commission uh, chair as well. And is Mr. Miller? I think we should. Mr. Miller is interested on two other boards as well. That's so. not my question yeah. for you was going to be. Yeah. Okay, so he has two other interests. So I'll just invite him to attend the next meeting for okay. the other boards that he's yes. interested in, if you'd like. Okay, great. Yes. Um, do I have a motion or any discussion about Barry Curland? Good. All right. Somebody, anybody want to make a motion? You want to do two at once? Are, are we raised for okay. yeah. everybody in concert on all that? Yes. Okay. So yes, I will accept a motion for both together. For Move to appoint Barry Curland and Grace Gardner to the Economic Development Commission for a term of three, three years. Yeah. Second. Moved by Mrs. Conley. Sorry. Second by Mrs. Harrison. All in favor? Aye. Uh, and then we have two renewals. Uh, one for George Zizi. I hope I pronounced his last name correctly. Correct. Yeah, who I didn't put on the uh, executive action, but we can still. Yeah. And Doug Smith. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Move to appoint the following individuals for a term of three years until successive name uh, is named George Zizi to the board of, uh, zoning board of appeals and Doug Smith uh, to renew on the historic commission. Second. Move by Mrs. Canfield, second by Mrs. Connolly. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you to all those who came forward, and uh, we appreciate your participation. And thank you to Doug and George for renewing. I'm oh, sorry. The real thing, the intervention, I just said the quality of oh, the yeah. folks yeah. coming forward is so. I think we're going to continue to see that. Yeah, yeah. Great. because people work from home, and it's really annoying. It is. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, do we want to do Do we have to do liaisons now? I guess we do, right? Or that's totally up to you. If you want to put it on the next meeting, that's fine too. Or you want to just go well, through I think the meetings are ought to be pretty full. I know. So. I'm sorry. The other meetings, yeah. All right, we can go through it. So usually um, the chair um, does the advisory committee. So I'll take that. Affordable Housing Trust, I'm happy to finish my year out there. If nobody has yeah, yeah, yeah. had such history. Anybody want to be on the Animal Control Board? I'm happy to take that one. All right. Karen Canfield. So we actually have here. I know. Well, I was so busy this year on that board. Anybody um, interested in the Beach Commission? I'll do it. Oh, oh. All right. Oh, Susan. Susan, you want the beach? Sure. Okay. Who's Andrew, do you want to stay with beautification? Sure. Just for the moment. Happy to continue. I've done it. Okay. Board of Health. I'll do it again if you want. Okay. Karen. Uh, Bylaw Review Commission. This is Canfield. Is that still so 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 <laughs> That's fine. Um, I did get Lorraine's only had one application for that. And so I have reached out to the folks that had indicated that they were interested. I just right. don't think they were aware of it. Thank you. That was my bad. So How many no. positions are open? I think it's All seven. Three. Five one? No, we changed. Is that five? I don't I can't remember. remember. I know what okay. on it. I get that question's in your book. Yeah, yeah. the bylaw review committee. Yeah. Number seven. It is in the book. Sorry. Oh, sorry. No, no, that's okay. I think I can look at it. Well, it's. Um, Okay, well, we don't need to decide that right now, right? Absolutely. So, you know, we'll just go through. I believe it's five members. Thank you. All right, so I will help with that. Um, cable TV, anybody want that? Yeah, you've been on that a long time. We haven't met in a while, though. Yeah. Yeah. Probably yeah. since COVID. We need to reopen. Should we have our TV guy do it? 
Mr. Take it on All right, so that's going to go to Karen Connolly. Capital Planning Committee. You guys split it last year. Yeah, I am. Um, I, 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 I don't like to offer someone else's input on that. So I'd be happy to step back. Step back. Yeah. Andrew, do you want to stay on it or do you want to do something else? You just said you were for six. So I slide it. Okay. You want to split it? Sure, I'll split it. All right. Well, it's important that somebody's there. So yeah. just, it's not, it's one of those committees that you do. Have do you want to have a second and do something else? No, it's fine. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So you guys want to split it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Turner review is. I think we can. It's completed. We it's completed. Right? Yeah. We okay. Across the line. Wow. Look at that. Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations. Check. Uh, <gasps> now we just have to get into the legislature uh, stuff. <laughs> Coastal advisory. And it doesn't matter. Maybe somebody else wants to step on that. Where Karen's been. You've been doing most of it. I haven't uh, actually. They they don't meet that often. But they. they a bunch of other things with the yeah. sort of intersect with them. Yeah, yeah. Whole Parkway. Whole Parkway intersects with them. Yeah. And the Beach Commission, I suppose, will wait. Yeah. So yeah. a little bit. Yeah. I mean, so I'll stay. I'll share it with you. I'm happy keep it. Keep it shared. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. You want to say it's Cole Parkway, Karen? Yeah. Unless someone wants it. Which is anywhere in the dike down there. Well, where is <laughs> it? I need to change courses. No, I'm straight. Sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, no, I mean, it's, I meant that literally. <laughs> uh, Commission on Disabilities. Andrew? Okay. Um, it's next floor. CPC. CPC. I'm good with that. Let's right there. Very much. Okay. Conservation. I can stay on that. Uh, sure. Well, yeah, I mean, I'll stand on for another year. There's, they've, they've made us, um, they've made, there's some things that we've been working on that I'll get to on my own reports. Okay. Council on aging. Unless somebody, I mean, unless somebody really wants to step yeah. in. Yeah. I should probably ask the new board member, Susan, if you have any interest. Yeah. I'm not going to help on that if you wanted that one, but either way. We don't split a ton of them, honestly. Yes. Yeah. There's so many. Yeah. You'll just, you won't be able to. You know what? Your, your ZBA background might be. Yeah, but if you're in the middle, it's fine. Oh, I can find it. All right, so who's doing conservation? So we'll give that to Susan. Susan? Okay. Hustle on aging. Um, I'd like to stay on that. Um, okay. I don't know if we need to stay. Do you need a share? I don't think it's necessary. Tony totally just really okay. finished on um, that. Uh, DEI. I'm fine with staying on it one more year, or does somebody else want to take a step? Oh, okay. Uh, EDC, two Karens. I didn't even really know I was <laughs> sharing it. So um, I would like to stay on that and the chamber because they kind of go hand in hand. Okay, so let's just have Karen Canfield just to free people up. Go. Uh, financial forecasting. Yeah, like I said, um, yourself and mine and me. Okay. Uh, historic commission. Karen Canfield's on it now. I'm happy to take it. You know. Uh, well, then, I mean, if you're doing planning and coal, you got some heavy lifts. Yeah. So, and then that's also going to be. Yeah. Did we skip coal for a point? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, you can no, 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 no. I guess I was you, yeah, blanking out for a minute. Uh, <laughs> no, you're on it, Missy. Okay. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Yeah, oh, so that we forget. So historic, Karen Canfield? I can stay on. Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was thinking third, I can keep it. It's just a liaison position. Library trustees? That's fine. Is that a committee? No, it's just a liaison for the trustees. And oh, like okay. Okay. It's like planning. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, um, master plan court implementation team. Did that ever meet? Yes. It did. Okay. Like when? September of last year. Yeah, it's just one. one so we haven't met since then. No, that's all right. I'll, I'll well, say it's a planning court. Yeah, right? it does. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
Uh, planning board and stay with that. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. Plymouth County Advisory Board, that's me. Public Building Commission. I'm happy to just stay in there. So we don't have one. Yes, we have a meeting right now, right? We do, actually. But I can't have a meeting tonight. I was going to say, they have an agenda. Oh, they did? Yeah. Okay. They're getting a form. They're missing members now. They have oh, to they are. Stuff off. I'm having a hard time getting members <laughs> to that. So. Oh, we do. Well, let's try to recruit for that. That's a good one. It's yeah. important. Um, I can keep it. Recreation. Andrew, do you want to keep that? Or Susan, do you want to pick some? We've got to get Susan on some of these. Sure, I'll do. <laughs> well, it's up to you. Andrew, do you want to stay? Or Susan? No, I'm, it should be the most tech. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, Susan Harrison you know, alone. You don't have to see that a big one. No. 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 I mean, they're not, I mean, the tennis courts are going to come up. But, yeah. Um, they usually have quick meetings. And then Rex's going to be brought in for the conversation with Mordecai Lincoln. Yeah. So, okay. Well, I'll be in that conversation. Okay. So, so you're good for recreation? Just, yeah, but their okay. next step is to bring in Rec. And All right, school well, building committee. Well, yes. yeah. um, we're <laughs> happy to take in. Would it be a conflict or would it be really efficient if we got Susan to do that? No, conflict. <laughs> no, can't be a little School committee, Andrew, do you want to keep that? Sure. Or is anybody else? Uh, Situate Chamber of Commerce, Karen Canfield. Yeah. I feel like lining all that. Sister Harbor Advisory Develop Redevelopment Commission, Karen. Yeah, Karen, 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 um, anybody want to be the liaison to the sister cities? Um, I really love that group, but um, Susan, I'm, 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 I don't want to take it away. I do love it. No, no, no. I've got plenty to do. I, it's, it's a really, I mean, they're really um, organized and they've created a. They don't require a lot of guidance. They don't require a lot. All right, Susan. So, do you want both of you? No. Or just that Susan? one's good. And then. So, just Susan. Yep. Yeah, it's a great group. South Shore Coalition. I have to do that, right, Mr. Chair? Now, the next ones I have to do is chair street acceptance traffic rules. Yeah. I have to do those, right? Yeah. I don't have to do veterans. Does anybody want veterans? I'm just trying to mitigate how many meetings people have. I'm happy to do it. Um, I'll do it. Another great group. Oh, All great groups. Although I, I will tell you, I'll either do veterans or waterways because I don't think I can take. I can do waterways. How about that? Okay, that'd be good. It's yep. They they like to have a board member at their meetings too. Know they do. So, what about the water resources commission? Uh, yes, sorry, to get there. Andrew, do you want to stay on sure. that? Okay, widows walk. Just telling you myself, I don't want to stay. Zoning board of appeals. I don't mind doing that. That's good. And Susan will do that. Yeah, that makes sense. That'll um, say. And they don't really need us. I mean, it's really All right, good. I think you have a pretty yeah. balance. Do you have a pretty balance? Yeah. Do I have an off of them? You have one, two, three, eight. four, five, six. Yeah, you have plenty. Seven, eight. Jeez. Okay. Yeah. A couple of them you're sharing, though, right? Well, one of them you're sharing. Um, so you've got rec, shellfish. Oh, I'm sharing. Sister City's not not um, overly taxing. What else do you want to do? You want to get off of that? Which one? Okay. No. no, it's about the same. I think for everyone, I'm just How making many sure. How many do we have? Get one. No, I mean, something else. I should have five. You have five. 
you want to take something from the region? Sure. Let's force trade, Susan. I have seven. I'll take one from it. Oh. I'll trade you one. <laughs> do you want to do capital planning by yourself? Or, Susan, did you want to do it? Yeah. Uh, I'll let you pick this. Oh, yeah. You want to be on capital? I, I mean, I don't need to. All right. All right, maybe you take the capital plan. Do you want to get into it? Do you want to do recreation? Or are you going to come on capital? Do you want to do recreation? Well, I have one. I'll stand right. How are you standing right? Where's the seven? All right, we're splitting capital. I'll take a little thousand right. Okay. 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 And that works. Okay, so because you're on that anyway. Okay, okay. I'll type it up, and if it gets too much or something, we can always change it, right? I won't mind if you want my notes too. I think I've got it all. Okay. You just got it. All right, thank you. Thanks, guys. That's another quick. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, next is to um, any liaison reports. Um, yeah, thank you. Okay. It's, it's past my bedtime. Oh, yeah. 10 35. I just have a quick, quick one is that, that, that uh, I, don't, I don't know if you recall on Comic Con, we had talked about trying to figure out a way to give them more support for the maintenance and management mm -hmm. of the properties because they, you know, their meetings are just really uh, hearings and, and things. So they did discuss in April. Um, how they thought, you know, should that be a subcommittee, should be separate, um, and they were kind of split on it, and so I have a follow-up with Frank because they haven't moved forward on any decision on that, but they did have the conversation. Okay. So, um, and then um, the sister series, Catherine and Fogo celebration is going to be July 7th at 6 p.m. at Pier 44. Um, so if you're around, that is going to be a fun celebration. July 7th? July 7th is the Friday night. Okay. Um, and that you already heard about the kickoff, the summer kickoff of the library. Anybody else? I'll just quickly say if I haven't before that the old Markley Redevelopment Committee mm -hmm. will be sending out an RFP for um, engineer, engineering firms to help us work through what we can do. Uh, especially related to the flooding on the Cole Parkway, and it's being funded through a an ARPA grant. That's awesome. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah, Corey has it. The, the Harbor Grant. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I don't have any Andrews. No, we talked about it earlier. One of the dates. Okay. Thank you, Susan. Susan, she has a She has an idea. She has, she has a lease. Yeah. Um, and then, okay, one <laughs> <Lunch laughs> <counts. laughs> yeah. town, town news. I think you all got correspondence. Oh, sorry, oh. town news. I'm oh, sorry. I was just gonna say, I think everybody did, uh, should have gotten an email about the Fax Coalition um, reception tomorrow night from six to seven at the library. And I'll be honoring an, an individual. As I think it's supposed to be a secret and a surprise. So, but so I, I didn't get a notification of that. Well, you got it at six thirty. So I'm and it's tomorrow night. night. It's tomorrow night. Yeah. No, I didn't. I don't see anything here from unless it's. I did not either. Who's it from? Uh, it's from the fax organization. Anne Marie it's, Galvin. No. no. Uh, she sent it to your personal email list. Too. No. Um, I'll forward this to you later. I am not here. I'm not, I'm not in town, so. I'm going to try to go by that as my daughter's Okay. Um, is that it, Karen? Mm -hmm. Sorry. No, it's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, correspondence? This morning? Yes, there's correspondence. Um, from uh, Division of Marine Fisheries, unless we talk about this the last meeting about the um, shellfish, um, transplanting of shellfish. So this is for recreational shellfishing, we've gotten approval to transplant shellfish in North and South River. So it's 80 bushels of shellfish and it is transferred from in Somerset and 
and brought to an area of the South River and the North River. So this will be propagating for a hopeful, fruitful next season. But it does say contaminating. Right, it does say contaminating, and that's what they do. They like relay the shellfish, and like by the time two places that are closed, and then the, they would filter through. And like they, oysters too. Yes, just they would filter the water in the North and South River. Thank you for so that. so it's common that you do the permits for DMF and um, there will be volunteer opportunities. So we'll keep people posted where they we will outreach to people to um, to go help you know disperse this shellfish. So we do it on an incoming tide. So hopefully, and <laughs> when the water comes in there, safe. We wouldn't want to do it on an outgoing. And will that be a lot of a lot of dolls there? Will that help us with reopening those plan flats at some point? Um, it it might. We're putting them in areas that are currently open. Okay. So um, so we're putting contaminated shellfish into. It they won't be contaminated. They're currently closed, so they won't be contaminated. It just seems. That's okay, that's what it does. They, um, is that the only thing? Um, it's 1045. I know. Mordecai Lincoln suggested alternatives for future use. Um, is that going to be an agenda item at some point? Yes. Yes. Okay. Can we make that an agenda item? Yes, we are okay. going to. Okay. And then Do we want that on the next agenda or a future agenda? Well, let's look and see what the next one looks like. Okay. So, so it's going to be a, a discussion. It needs, yeah, I mean, it's basically giving us different alternatives for um, use of Mordecai Lincoln to try to get funding to bring revenue in as well. So I would like to have a discussion on that. Um, and then Cedar Point. Um, let's see this one. It's a letter outlining their contributions to the oh, community. Okay. Yeah, out, outlining the contributions to the community. And that's all I have. Thank you to Cedar Point for those contributions. Yes. And then we need an acceptance of the minutes of the meeting from May 30th. Move to accept the minutes with the select board meeting held on May 30th, 2023. Second. Moved by Ms. Conway, second by Mrs. Canfield. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And uh, do I have a motion to adjourn and sign documents? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. So moved. Second. Second. Moved by Mrs. Canfield, second by Mr. Goodrich to adjourn. All right. Thank you very okay. much, everyone. Have a great night.